Okay. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the stream. Welcome to the, the third and I'm hoping final uh, build stream for the LDO Voron Zero S1 kit. So this was a an LDO provided kit that has some upgrades. It's the S1 special edition. So let's say good morning to DJ Natty and Chris. Masvidus and Ert and Burn 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 the Hedges and Rod. This should be be me. Good morning. Good morning, Bill. Good morning, Nick Nick. Hey little brat. Hey Brian. Hey B McNichol. How's everyone doing? Hey Poity. Thomas, Maurice, Bruno, Mike 4D and Kelvin and Tiago. Tiago? Mr. Vbrick and Silly ID and Stefan. How's everyone doing this fine Sunday? Did your did your team win the World Cup? So sometimes the timing isn't great for for the start of for the start of stream, Scott. Um, Charlie, Charlie did his business and he's he's he'll be he'll be by shortly, I'm sure. <laughs> um, hey Gustavo. Hey Collie. Hey, Jason, this is perfect timing. This is perfect timing. World Cup is over. Hey, Keith, welcome. Hey, Slim Gig, Dunar. Hey, Dunar. Glengus. Hey, Pex Peppers. Hey, John. Hey, Zombie Hedgehog and Victor. Hello, everybody. So I screwed up a little bit with the member stream yesterday, somehow I forgot to charge my 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 mic, the, the receiver part of the, my mic. Now it's got a pretty good charge on it. It'll probably get us four or five hours, um, but I might have to, I'm prepared to switch over to a, a different mic if, if something happens. So let me know if, if audio goes, goes out. Um, I should be able to see it. <laughs> hey, Frank. Hey, 69 Pendolo, hey, Bits, and I missed something up here. I wanted to thank Brian T for being a member for five months. Thank you. And what else do we have here? Eclipse, member for two months. Thank you. Hey, Nathan. Hey, Bruno, power bank for Mike. I don't know what it is, but when I've tried to charge at the same time as is it running, it, um, it distorts the audio quality. So I will swap to an external mic for, and then plug it into charge. And then we'll probably be at a different mic for about half an hour or so, um, if we have to get to that point. So I'm expecting to go a while. We're gonna finish this today. That That's the goal. We are going to finish. Um, Eclipse, thank you for gifting the memberships. That's awesome. Welcome all the new members. Pex Peppers, this is not, this is cr based off of, is it Chris Mueller who did the Kirigami bed mount? Oh, super excited for the secret weekday project build. Yeah, so am I. I've been looking forward to that one for a long time. Hey, Gary. Nathan, thank you for being a member. Oh, here comes Charlie. <laughs> We're expected to go extra time and then penalties. Yep, but we got a giveaway at the three hour mark. So Jason at LDO has been kind enough to, this is a final stream in the build series. We are giving away an entire kit, not this kit, but one that you get to build. We're gonna give away an entire kit. We're gonna give away two um, orbiter extruders and also, as, as will be for, for now in the foreseeable future, um, from Polymaker, a roll of Polymaker filament. Hi, Mark. And here's Charlie. He's getting his attention. Absolutely love the look of that space gray, and I think he said it was Sparta Purple Mist, yes. And here comes him. He is insistent on this spot right here. It's 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 actually getting rather rather um, irritating. <laughs> Dark Sky Steve, thanks for becoming a member. 
and off off stream let's see here off stream we had mark and mark and oh it it, it, it doesn't show up anymore another um ninja something ninja joined so thank you <laughs> Um, so does your complete mean printing for this one or complete? Um, I'm hoping to print. So Charlie does deserve all the attention, but I got to get something done sometimes too. Our, our schedules don't always mesh. All I can see is orange chairs floating over everything now. It is winter, so he is shedding a little less. <laughs> so, okay. So when we left off, we had just belted it, the X carriage on, and we will be following. Let's see. Let me get to the right spot in the manual here before you just have to watch me scroll. Hi, Noda. Hey, Jeremy. Hey, Zero G, G Design. Kerry Taylor, member for a month. Thank you. I love that V Zero base plate. Is that? standard for the kit it is not so i used my um or or Tur laser master 3 um diode laser to engrave this just a little fun thing guiano thanks for coming remember yeah look at this he is he is chilling he is fine right like this this is his favorite spot lately <laughs> hey Benjamin need to make him a leather seat up there Gary thanks for gifting the memberships hi Exodus bear cool okay so where was I let me scroll let me do some scrolling I was looking for I was doing a little bit of prep before today because we need to get this done so that means I did a couple of things off off camera that I You've seen me do a billion times. So. We are on to probably putting the bed on is what the what the instructions have. Yep, here we are. So Mike, oh Mike, you um, won an upgrade kit and it already shipped. Awesome. You won last stream, right? That's exciting. I'm, that's awesome. Wish you could tag on mobile. You have to spell the whole thing out, right? And have it all correct. <laughs> it just doesn't auto-populate. Hey, Danny. Okay. So we left off, we finished belting, we tensioned, we made sure the gantry isn't racked. So now we're gonna move on in the instructions. Now we are using the Kirigami bed setup. Um, so we won't be following these instructions exactly, but we will get it set up and get the Get some wiring done, actually. Get some wires going through the through the thing. All your yeah, all my shirts will have the shoulder worn out. Yeah. And plenty of hairs embedded in them. So let's go on to the bed. So I'm gonna see if I can set Charlie down and maybe he'll he'll chill out and I can put the camera on him. He should be used to this by now. Give me a moment. Let's see if that works. There we go. Nope. <laughs> Boiled. I, I, I put the I put the chair there too soon. Nope, nope, nope. You're gonna you're gonna be over here. <laughs> Okay, so let's go, let's set the printer aside for just a second. And so one of the upgrades, so this is this is getting into one of the upgrades from the, the S1 part of this kit is a, um, a different heat heater bed setup. Dunar, I'm getting into the cursor territory. There's no way I'm gonna find it. There's no way I'm gonna find it on stream. If anybody sees it as I'm scrolling, tag me. <laughs> Glengus, thanks for coming a member. Hi, Mr. K. 
Okay, maybe we'll go here. Oh yeah, he's he's gonna he's gonna cause problems. Get the camera out of the way so it's not tangled up on him. Here, you go there. I don't want. <laughs> okay, here is the build plate and parts. So it has a little M3 threaded in thermistor. Not with that attitude, yeah. <laughs> I'd use shorter bolts and stated as I lost Z height with bed mount. Yeah, we were chatting about that in one of the channels the other day. So, oh, a little bit of a headache this morning. Okay, so here is the special, special build plate. It has a polyimide heater attached and then a little shield underneath um, to kind of protect it. So thermistor goes right in the middle and it's got a um, thermal fuse already attached and the wiring going to the Wagos that we're gonna put in. Hey, Charlie. We will have to add the magnet. There's the textured build plate and the springs for the, for the bed. I think the rest of this is just packaging. So. Hi, Johan. Hi, KF from Hamburg, Germany. Welcome. So the first thing we are going to do is make sure this is clean and apply the magnet. Looks a little bit, look a little too much partying last night. What do you mean? Oh no, I have no idea. Maybe I'm just not hydrated enough. I didn't, not at all. <laughs> so this heater is 100 watts. The spec heater is 60 watts. So there is a larger power supply to go along with that. And there's Charlie, he's gonna, he's going to be Hi. Do you know what adhesive is on that bed? Is it the 3M stuff or the new stuff Fabrico Heat has used that is rated to 200C? It's, it's gonna be 3M. It looks like 3M 300 SL or SE, LSE. <sighs> no, Charlie, no, I need to work. You're gonna go over here. <laughs> um, let me grab paper towel and alcohol. The S1 does come with the with the Kirigami bed. Comes with Kirigami bed, a high wind X-Rail, um, this polyamide heater setup, and a special controller, the Pico Bilical. Charlie got detention. Well, maybe he'll maybe he'll stay over on his his bed. Where did my glasses go? Oh, they're there. Can't can't not have the glasses. Okay, let's peel this. And get in here. Try not to touch that. And for what little bit we touch, we'll clean up. Hey, Guliano, you you were my you were my person, right? Hey, BBs, is it the fine texture on the sheet? Yes, it is a fine texture. Okay. Make sure that's nice and clean. Yes, the heater, did I mention the weight? The weight of what? The, the, the bed? I have no idea. I don't have a scale super handy either. I have to put little pieces of duct tape on the t table to keep mine off it at night. Otherwise everything ends up on the floor. 
Made a remix today, remix today of those parts tray to make them modular. Awesome. Okay, let's see. I have a roller that I use for this. And my technique for this is to peel an end. There we go. Peel just an end and fold it back. Now I can set this and you're gonna get probably here. Let's do this so you don't get a view of my, my thinning hairline. See if we can do it. Oh, and that's on that's on manual focus now. Let me let me fix the let me fix the focus. Yeah, I'm just gonna put that on auto. And see if it'll see if it'll focus in. Does the bed need scuffing for optimum adhesion? Not the aluminum side. It'll be fine as long as it's clean. It's a machined surface. It's not perfectly flat anyway. So folding this, folding this tape, the the um, the backer off, off like that makes it to where it doesn't stick yet. You can line this up really well, nice and centered, and then hold it on this side. Just make sure I've got this well centered and then we can push in from the center, from the center there, and then work our way out. And that'll lock this thing in place. And then you probably best to take maybe some tweezers or something and lift up this side and we can grab, grab the, grab the, the backer and then start working this on. Hi, Charlie. You are just gonna be something today, aren't you? So work this on, work any air bubbles out as we go. And then these rollers are nice for applying pressure. So just roll over the whole thing. Jason, happy holidays, everyone. Please enjoy the last stream of the V0S1 build and good luck for the giveaway. V0S1 started to ship from last week, but COVID situation got worse now. We may have to push out the schedule a bit. Charlie, no, I'm sorry, but I've got to work. Thank you, Jason. Oh yeah, my fingernails are pretty short. <laughs> yeah, the milled surface is fine for adhesion. I would strip off the 3M and use RTV silicon to adhere the heater to the bed, but not for mag sheets though. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. Did you put the giveaway links in the description? They are, do you see them? Are the give giveaway links in the description? Because I set that up right before stream and I turned them on. Let's see, let's see if we have any entries. No notification from YouTube yet. Hmm. Hey, Tinkers. Welcome. Awesome. Yes, we are. We have entries in every category, so we are good. Oh, shoot. Oh, oh. I've got to pet him. I, I'm sorry. I got to take a little bit of time to pet Charlie because Charlie did what would normally, if you watch it in a video, be be kind of a, a chuckle. But he jumped from here, this plastic bin, to here, and he slipped. So he missed, and he hit here and fell. <laughs> okay, let me pet Charlie for a minute. He deserves to get petted. <laughs> <laughs> Poor guy. You're able to enter all three. Awesome. 
The roll is called a briar roller. Awesome. Ooh, COVID in China. Ouch. Old sloppy kitty. Well, I mean, he was trying to jump off of a off of a slick box. He's okay though. He's Apparently I didn't give him enough pets at the beginning of stream. <laughs> Good morning, Derek. Zombie, thank you. This might have been a ploy to get more cuddles. Pretty much stop at the third word from us cases. Where are we at? I didn't catch that. <laughs> he did land on his feet, but it was pretty dramatic. Yes, if you haven't seen it, go back to the to the last Idex Trident Tridex stream I did and watch just the first five minutes. If you haven't seen it, watch that and you'll get you'll get all all about Charlie. <laughs> Don't do it now. Do it after this stream. Okay, Charlie. Now you need to relax right there. Oh. <laughs> okay, let's make sure this is Is West 3D a reputable site? Absolutely. West 3D is absolutely reputable. Okay, now we need to cut the cut the holes for the Let's see, we got one here. Gonna press. And then one there's, so there's three holes here. Grab my exacto knife. I'm just gonna cut a couple of slits all the way to the edges. I just kind of just kind of work my way around this, keeping the tip of that blade in the in the hole and cutting away. No careful with the soft bleedy bits, remember. And once you get that that first bit out of there, it's just trimming from there. So it's just a, a quick using the aluminum as a guide. Not too much pressure. It doesn't take a lot. End up like that. You don't see links to giveaways. Try ref refreshing. Try refreshing. I've got I've got couple hundred entries in there already on all of them, so I know they're working. Okay, so that's one done. What is the best way to remove old magnet from the plate properly? It depends. I've had some that get really brittle and become a real pain, but once you get the magnet off by just working it off, um, IPA, 99% IPA works really well at dissolving the adhesive. <laughs> And then just bottoms out. And then this will come out here. And then just trim along. Diego, 49, greetings from Double T. Thank you. Appreciate that. I use punch pliers for those holes. That'd be fine too. Are those wires the heater wires? They seem very thin or are they the sensor? These are the, these are the heater wires and they are, let's see if it says, they are 20 gauge. So 100 watts at 24 volts is um, what, four amps? What is a 20 gauge wire capable of carrying? Let 
Okay, now just clean that out. What do we got? <laughs> West Sudi is a scam. I've had to pay full price for my stuff every time I miss a sale. <laughs> hey, Pelfest. A putty knife to get it started helps with getting magnets off. Yeah. Okay, and then the last one. Cutting the, the X in there just kind of helps make sure I know where the hole is. Because we're using the sides of the hole as a guide. There we go. Get that out. Just turn the knife around. Light pressure. Just like that. Okay. Let me get all this magnet stuff thrown away and put my knife away. The draws will be at the, yeah, so thank you. The, the, the giveaways are at the three hour mark still. That's my compromise. I require folks to be here, but it's at a set time. So it'll be at 1 p.m. Pacific time, three hours into the stream. So two and a half hours from now. So. 7 amps at less than two feet. Yeah, and we're, we're less than two feet here. So. With 0.1 technically, you don't have to cut holes into the magnet at all. Just fit the screws and nylocks first. Yeah, but I like serviceability later. And I don't want it to, I don't want to have to cut it in the, in the printer because it was spinning. So. Okay. And then we are going to go, I don't know if we're going to end up having enough screws. So let's go with the instructions right now. I think it calls for 40 millimeter screws for the, for the mounting ones you may want to go to 35s if you have trouble hitting Mac V and this is another reason you might want to swap some fasteners out for cutting those holes you can't cut the magnet before putting it on sure but you'd have to line it up really well and this I didn't have to worry about lining up the holes for those display name or your YouTube handle whatever shows up in chat I want to be able to see the, the person drawn and be able to see in chat that that's you. <laughs> okay, let's go here. We've got the magnet sheet. See, it even has holes in the magnet here. <laughs> the heater is already applied on this. Thermistor is already applied. And we are calling for some M3 by 40s. So... I have got some M3 by 40s. Got these guys. Yep. So we are going to go M3 by 40s. And I like to use, because I know I have a few extras. Use the washer and the lock nut. And we have a lock nut, lock nuts right here. Okay, we have 5.5 .5. and let's go with this. Um, hey, Zachary, I think tap is worth it. Seems more reliable than clicky. I am very happy with tap. So I, I'm, I'm having very good luck on two printers with it. The only two that it's installed on so far. 
Where'd you get the Voron Design mug? My friends in the in the Czech and Slovak community sent it to me. Sanity and Paval, and I know I'm missing. I, I don't remember all the names, but I appreciate it. Isn't the thermistor in the bag? Yeah, thermistor's right here. Did I say thermistor was already attached? I didn't mean to, I misspoke. Let's see, I need a either a wrench or a pass-through. This is another of my RC, a J Concepts um, wheel nut tool, and it just happens to be 5.5 millimeters. So it works well for stuff like this. It passes, it's got a pass through. Hey, Christian. Use tap with texture or smooth PDI. I have been using it with both the, um, the Fabrico, the, the Honey Badger P series bed, which is a satin, as well as a, um, a textured. Um, I think the texture one I have is actually an old Matter Hackers texture. I really love the texture on it, um, but I've also used it with an LDO textured sheet as well. So I saw the 2.4 bed mod belt, 2.4 belt mod conversion. Wonder how well tap would work with that. 2.4 belt mod. Are we talking about, what are we talking about there? RC tools are awesome. There, there's so much, I mean, the RC stuff has been around for so long. People get clever with the tools and sometimes they hit. Jeremy, that's a pretty cool part sorting tray. I believe, unless I missed it, in the description is a link to my printables profile. And I posted it there on printables. It's a remix from someone who did another one. It's just theirs was too thin and didn't have any fillets. So I added a bunch of fillets and made the walls thicker. Looks like it. The problem is the electric screwdriver doesn't have enough torque. Doesn't have a lot of torque, so. This is a, a, a nylock nut, which requires a little more oomph, a little more ugga duggas. Some nut drivers have hollow shafts. You can find the very cheap ones. Yeah. This would be a great, yeah. <laughs> Someone, oh, a belted, I see, I see. Um, a belted bed on the 2.4 and how that would work with tap. Hey, that's a good question. Depends on how they support it on the backside. Daniel, I will be drawing in just under two and a half hours from now. Building my first Trident and going tap in the process of choosing a hot end. I keep going back and forth between the options. Is there a preferred hot end? I know this can be user preferred, very preferred. Um, the Rapido works well, the Dragons work well, the, the Revo works well. I'm, I'm partial to the Revo just because I really like the, the idea behind it. So, hey Ricky B. You have 5.5 of full Ugga Dugga. Well, my, my scale of Ugga Duggas might be a little different than your scale of Ugga Duggas. <laughs> I don't think they changed the bed support on the belted mod, but if they're, depending on how much, because there's gotta be some clearance there, it's gotta slide past the bed, right? So depending on how much force that is and could affect where the um, tap triggers. But I'm not fully familiar with those mods either. Revo E3D have bad thermistors. Some of them have been bad. Any of them that have the blue thermistor wires should be in the newer batches. Hey, my tech review. Okay, so those are on. Let's go back to the instructions. How many inch pounds is a Nugga Dugga? I have no idea. <laughs> Let's 
Thanks, Steve Builds. I put an alarm clock so I don't sleep in. Yeah, don't don't sleep in and don't go to lunch. Polar Ted will tell you that. I bought a digital torque screwdriver for $80 for calibrated Ugga Duggas. Perfect. Okay, those are on. I like to use a washer there. That's not in the instructions, but I use it anyway. And then we put this on with the springs and some thumb nuts. So the kit comes with some metal thumb nuts. Which are nice. Um, we are going to put the thermistor on before we do that, though. Does tap create a mesh every time it runs? Uh, if you want it to, it's all up to your settings. Okay, so here is this, and then this is gonna thread in, and I don't have a great way to get to that. Let me see if I have a thin, a thin wrench in here. I do not. I'm gonna be very careful with some some pliers and just a tiny bit. There we go. That's all. That's all I'm gonna tighten that. Okay, so that goes there. It's gonna plug into a little board that a little printed uh, connector holder we put on the on the kirigami bed. We're gonna put some of this stuff away. That we don't need any more this and the springs. Does a thermistor need any lock? No Loctite or anything. Um, if you really wanted to put some um, thermal compound in there, it'd be fine, but I didn't. I think it'll be fine. It doesn't come in the kit, so I'm not gonna do anything and we'll see how it works out. If I feel like the readings are weird. Okay, let's move this down. Move the bed down, move the gantry back so we get access. So there is a part that I modeled up and the creator of the Kirigami mod apparently made it as well, but never published it because they didn't know if it was needed or not. But these have slotted holes where the the bolts for the, the bed go in. And they're here because depending on what your particular setup is, it needs to be either pushed back or pushed forward. Um, to get the full um, travel of the bed. Now you can put it on and just push it back and tighten it down, but I'm concerned that it'll creep over time. So just a super simple model, and I think these might be linked from the LDO's site. And these just go in here and force and, and take up the space. So you put this in whichever way that um, you want the bed to be. And I think on a, a V0.1, we want the bed in the back position. So we're going to try putting this. Oh, before we do that, before we do that, because this is the Kirigami bed setup, I want to do another thing first is I want to put this LED wiring in place so I don't have to try to get my fingers in there and plug it in later. So we have a NeoPixel harness here that'll go through the cable chain and and plug in. So I'm going to plug this in first, and then this is going to go back through here and then up into the um, up into the cable chain. Derek, member for six months. Thank you. They incorporate something like the Y plus needed for Bontex. The long holes are, are for LGB, LGX. Well, there's there's a few reasons. So uh, I'll tell you right now, 0 0.2 will need, the, will need the forward position. 0 0.2 is gonna need this mounted in the forward position. So for this setup, I'm gonna mount it in the rear position because I think that's what it needs for the, um, for the, this combination. But if other hot ends or whatever require it to be in a different position, then that's probably why 
these are here because 0.2 wasn't around when these were put here. <laughs> Okay, before I put this bed on, thinking through this, because this isn't necessarily, let's see if this is covered in the, in the, um, in the LDO docs really well. It might be, but Ricky B, member for six months. Thank you. The LDO has their own doc site, docs.ldomotors.com, and there is a Kirigami installation guide here. Let's see what they're, because we're deviating from the, from the spec manual. We already checked the, the cable chain because we put an end on the on the Kirigami bed. Oh, also for the MG9C. OK. The adjustability there is appreciated in any case, right? And this is all talking about the cable chain and then we have some wires. So I think I'm going to put all the all the bed. So let's put all of the the frame side wiring in before we put the bed on. What's the difference between the blue thermistor and the white one without the tubing? Oh, I don't I don't know what the actual difference is. Oh, OK, so we need bed cable chain and bed wiring. So we're, I may end up having to shift that bed again then. I hope that's not what we want. Where is the pad extension tape? It's okay. So we have a, a bundle of wire that I just pulled out of a bag. AC wiring, and we have the main main power wire and here's the heat bed bed heat wire okay and we have two ends of that they're both the same we are going to put the unmarked one up here in the uh, at the at the bed hey Phil I've designed today a carriage for LGX light and MGN 9C and there was 1.9 millimeter needed to shift. Okay. Does it have to go in between here then? So maybe a little piece that forces it to be in the middle. What is this one? This is bed thermistor. Okay. So this is bed thermistor and it comes with the, the ends crimped on but the connector in a little baggie here because you need to be able to get this through the cable chains and you can't do that with the JST end on it. Do you have to loop? Did you have to loop the rails for this build? I did. I did loop the rails. Hi, TT83. Okay, so what is the particular routing they take? So they come in from the back of the bed here. This is the Z rail. They come in from the back and just go straight to this little um, setup. And then they come from there along the side to the back and then the beds and stuff will go in there. So let's see if I can get a good angle on this. We are going to go maybe like this and Move this to the top. And get in. Can I get in with this? Hey, there we go. So we are going to go to the outside pins on the way go. We're just going to open all of these up. We're going to go to the outside pins. Push it in all the way and then make sure the snug that's going to go back out this way. And then the thermistor is going to plug in. I'm going to plug it in right here. 
That's gonna plug in right there and it's gonna go back the same way. Where do they, do they zip tie? Is there a specific spot they zip tie that? Yeah, so we take a zip tie, zip tie box go. The printer is small and cute. They're extremely useful too. Hey, Lester Tucker. So it looks like this is gonna be available in black, space gray, blue, and red. That's what Jason says. Hi, Viking Cat. Your hands look a bit large for all that. <laughs> okay, zip ties. So this is saying we are going to grab all of these and we're going to tie them right here. Right to this piece here. Is that all of them? And that's going to be all of those wires tied in right here. I'm going to leave enough slack here so we're not pulling anything super tight. There we go. And then those will go, then those will bend over and go up into the cable chain. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll go over right up like that. Get it untangled from the stepper wires. There we go. Let's see if this is a better view. Yeah. So does the Wago just fit in there or did you VHB it in? It snaps into place and they're in there. The parts are really well done. Um, they snap in and stay pretty secure. There's no no concerns there. Now we're gonna do deal with this wiring. Now they have us um, zip tying these along here. I was playing around with a little trick here, where I take the the zip tie from into this hole from the bottom, wrap it around the wires and right back through the same hole. And then you get something like that. And push this and then zip tie it through the, just run the zip tie through the head. And you've got a nice little neat, There's a little bit of room there. Nice little neat, neat little tie. Up from the bottom, back in through the hole. Does the V0 build differ significantly from the original V0.1 build? Does the S1 uh, build? It doesn't differ significantly. The bed is, is different. It, it'd be different anytime you install this Kirigami bed. Um, and then the electronics are ma the major differences. It's just a, a V0 with some, some useful mods. Already included for not, right now, not an increase in price. I, um, what do we have here? We've got a couple of zip ties. Um, Cameron was saying there might be a small increase next year. That's what he said in the first stream. Okay, so all of those are there. I wrote an S1 in orange, doesn't exist. It's possible that you have a, a reseller that has orange frames and they're, and they're mixing and matching the frames, eight bits. I, that's what my guess would be what's going on. Okay, and then those will go up into the same cable chain mount. So now that that's there, let's go ahead and put the cable chain in. 
Hi, Mark. So we have all of these wires that we need to run through the chain. Oh, we got an air cue here. Hey. Um, cable chain. There we go. Do we need any extra? So, so the thing came with these, did it? It, it came with two extra links, not attached. I don't know if we. Here, let's let's move this to the top. Let's see if I can tell if we're gonna need those. I think we're gonna need at least one of them, maybe both of them. Let's put one of them on. I'm just here, let's see if we can see what I'm doing. putting this into place and kind of holding it where I think it's gonna go on the bottom. And we're at full travel here. I think that is gonna be where we wanna be. Don't think we wanna be any more. So let's leave it at that, that one. Hi, Troy. So now we're gonna go back to the bottom here. It's not hooked up, so I can just push that through. And then we're gonna run these. Run these through. So let's separate these out so they're not completely tangled as we're going into the. Yep, so see that one. That one is tangled. Let's get these all split, split out. So here's here's the NeoPixel. Let's get that out of the way. Here is the. There we go. Now they're now they're, they're set. And these should be stiff enough. These 20 gauge wires should be stiff enough just to run through the. Hey, Josh. <laughs> Got it caught already. There we go. Okay, all the way through, and then we'll take the, we'll have to take the, the connector off the end. Now I could do the PTFE trick. I'm just seeing how bad this is to just push through. Not too bad so far. There we go. There's those. I'm gonna have to check out of fruit. Oh, did I did out of fruit get pies in? Okay, so that's that. Now we have the NeoPixels that need to go through. And I think I'm gonna need to do the the PTFE trick for these. Looks like my, hold on, hopefully I don't make a bunch of noise with this. There we go. Microphone came loose. Okay, so if you take a piece of the three millimeter ID PTFE tubing, you should be able to work that through the, the chain. And then you can take one, usually one at a time, when they, especially when they've got a connector on the end. And we can pull that through. All right, like that. Let me um, mute my other, mute my other computer. <laughs> 
So then push the PTFE tube through, back through. It's a lot easier to push that through than the, than the wire. Then take the next wire. And pull it through. So I will credit Wiley to teaching me this method. We covered this first on the Stealth Burner preview stream over a year ago. Okay. So those are all now through the, the chain. We can make sure they're all in the same. So this is going to come, these are going to come up here, and this is going to come up here, and then this can snap on now. Make sure we don't snip any, catch any wires in there. And then I'm going to take a zip tie and I'm going to capture these wires to the end link there. And hopefully I can do this without getting too much in the way of the, of the camera. So if these come up here, and this goes through the end here. I'm going to use, a, use my tweezers or something maybe to move the wires out of the way. Sorry, I know I'm in the way. Okay, and then we're gonna. So this is just proper, trying to trying to get some semblance of proper cable chain um, wire management by tying the, securing the the cables on each end and and then making sure that they follow the the center line path of the curve of the chain. So, thought you can unfold the cable chains. Not these small cable chains. This little seven by seven chain doesn't have the, the feature to open them up. Okay, but tweezers are sharp. That's okay. I didn't, I didn't hit anything hard enough to, they're not, they're not cutting sharp. They're, they're pokey sharp. Use, use a screwdriver if you want. I feel like I'm microphone wires in the way. Okay, so now all of these can go through this hole in the deck plate. Okay, and then we can turn this on its side and secure that, get a screw in there. That's gonna be a fun one to get in there. Get a screw in there and secure it. I already put a nut. There's a nut in here that we, that we put in. Let's see. Color choice really looks nice. I'm really pleased with it too, thank you. And it just happens to match my shirt today. <laughs> I did not pick purple to match the, the purple LDO shirt, but it works out well. This is gonna be a trick to get in here. Maybe I can use my use my tweezers again. And line this up. Get the wires out of the way line it up and then get my ball end wrench in here. I am not getting enough angle on that screw to actually use the ball end wrench. I'm gonna try it from the top. Oh. 
No. <laughs> That's fun. Let's try. What is going on here? There we go. Just had to hit it just right. Okay, now, nope, oh, there we go. <laughs> Let's go here. Oops, not that one. That one. There. Okay. <sighs> what will be my first print? I don't know. I'm not sure what the first print will be. I'm open to suggestions, always open to suggestions. Mister is my next project, a Mr. Arcade Cabinet. What is that? So what we're checking for here, what we're gonna check for here now that the cable chain's in place is that we can hit full travel without getting in the way. Oops, I was in the way there. So there, full travel, X-axis doesn't touch. It hits full travel. It's full travel at the bottom. Yep. We are good. We are good. So one, the one extra link it came with needed to be put on. That's all the way at the top. Yep. Still got some room there. So now we're going to take this and put a zip tie right at that bottom link to secure the wires. So I'm gonna go through the, through this side and now I can feel, I can get a better feel that I'm catching all the wires here. Now I'm gonna grab the bundle of wires and pull them all tight and then go fully loose. So I'm going tight and loose and then somewhere in the middle there is where I'm gonna tighten this down. And that should keep those uh, wires going through the center line of the, of the chain. Okay, I am way behind because I was scrolled up. You could print a working swatch truck like two minutes this time, 20 minutes this time, maybe. E3D reindeer? Oh, that's not a bad idea. The E3D reindeer is a good idea. I may go with that. Because I haven't printed one. I can't print something in your remote. That's a solid fork thing. You're right. I restarted my computer by zapping USB port with static electricity. Ooh. You're quite a shocking personality there, Sanity. John's here, right? Oh, John is here. Were you stroking a cat first? <laughs> so my my office at work has been um, has been decorated with tinsel and the the garlands, and it's been cold and dry. So as I walk between the cubicles along the hall, every single corner, because I mean I cut the corner, you got to apex the corner even when you're walking, right? Um, I brush against with my elbow that garland and get a shock every single time. <laughs> okay. So that is all of the wiring to the bed, run through the chain, NeoPixel included, let's put the bed on. So now the bed, can go on and just make sure the wires go down through this center spot. Maybe I can grab them from underneath here. There we go. Oh, we need springs. We need the springs. Where'd the other springs go? There's one. And one more. Oh, and I'm, I'm amiss. Just realized. Do 
There we go. What's rude? <laughs> Sorry, not been able to watch streams. That's okay. Like anti-static tinsel used in industrial equipment. We can use that. Could have said she was electrifying. <laughs> this is insanity we're talking about. Both. <laughs> okay, so this goes on. Let's see. That's fine. There we go. See the screws hanging out here. Now, I guess the question is, does anybody know which direction this needs to go? Does the bed go to the forward or the back position? Stop. Viking cat, why am I stopping? Oh, you're telling everybody else to stop. <laughs> Is anybody printing anything currently? I'm printing an MTG Commander deck box for my son that I designed in on shape. Awesome. So let's go to the back position or the forward position. I know it's forward for a 0 0.2. I'm going to put it, I don't know, I'm going to put it forward. So I'm going to hold that in place and then where'd my thumb nuts go? There we go. And then another one of these. I'm not. Hey, Kyle. I'm printing a Cali Dragon and Silk PLA. Awesome. At 275% scale. Is that is that this guy? Oops. This one. <laughs> and one more. Hi, no, 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 from Austria. Okay, so we are going to probably somewhat over tighten these to start. I want to be as compressed as possible. Tap is completed and I'm currently waiting on the Hark Toolhead PCB to arrive. Awesome. Okay. So then, let's see if we can keep this angle, maybe go like that. These just go in. Oops, go into the middle one. There we go. So that one, and then just kind of tuck it up out of the way. And that one, tug on them, make sure they're tight. And then this one goes into the other hole on this little connector PCB. And I'm going to unplug that. And I'm going to run it under these wires just to kind of manage it. There. Now everything's nice and tight up in there. OK, bed is all hooked up. Let's put the build sheet on there. There we go. 
Oh, where are we at? We are at... Okay, so we're done with the Kirigami instructions. So let's go back to the assembly manual. And all of this is done. No, there's some... So um, this is all the, the spec parts, not the Kirigami parts. So we'll skip over this. Cable chain, making sure the... That's all done. And now we got the ZN stops and the rear panel. So the, the, the ZN stop is pre-prepared in the kits. I'm printing R2-D2 pieces. I've always wanted to print an R2-D2. I've just not gotten around to it. I love the cat cam. <laughs> That's been the, the single biggest, po most popular addition to the stream. <laughs> that and, the, that and the, the top camera, top view. Okay, we have this, let's go back here. So ZN stops are pre-soldered in the kit, pre-connected. So we're gonna grab that and we're gonna put one on the X carriage and one on the Y carriage all with M2 by 10 self-tapping screws, and then we'll put together the Z and stop. So let's go with this view probably. Yeah, save that, make sure we don't lose that. The V0 is way more fun and useful than you think. I print on my V0 all the time. I am very, I, I will have four V0s when this is, when this is finished and they will probably all get used. I was wondering the other day how long I have to buy everything for the Trident build and, I've, and get it built to get a serial under a thousand. Ooh, I have no idea. We're in the 800s right now, right? You've probably got a couple of months. Okay, this is end stops. So these are all labeled. This is the Y end stop. So this is gonna, this is going to screw into the carriage up here onto the um, the A drive module up here. This is the X end stop. It's short because it's going to plug into a tool head board. And then this is the Z end stop and it doesn't have a connector on the end because you have to push it through a through a panel in the in the back. I did not add Dancing Santa Arcia. We've got regular Dancing RCF. I have not had time. I've been I've been working. Uh, this December has been busy. <laughs> I don't know that. I mean, uh, at this point, right, I'm not going to have another stream before this, before Christmas. So that'll have to maybe that'll be a next holiday season thing. What do I usually print on the V0 uh, test parts? Anything small, most of what I print will fit on here. Pretty soon Steve will be able to piff on his V0 farm. <laughs> okay, what are we gonna go for? Let's go here and a little out. So this is the Y end stop and it's gonna screw in to the side right here. So let's grab some two by tens and let's see. I'll use this screwdriver. Now, do you print skirts or wait to print them on the printer? So I pre printed everything for this build. For some reason, the instructions have the lever pointing up. I'm going to put it pointing down. I don't think for this it really matters. I'm going to bend these wires down a little bit. <laughs> it's tight there. 
don't over tighten these these screws. They just need to just need to tighten the touch. And then make sure that it triggers. It does not trigger. It does not trigger. Why doesn't it trigger? That doesn't push anymore. Maybe I do have to turn it over the other way. Because the lever is actually hitting the frame right here. So. A V0 is actually one of the good applications for sensorless homing because you don't have to you don't have to target an end stop a z end stop on it I'll turn this the other way and see if it hits the the end of the lever was hitting the frame and that was stopping it from triggering the other way so let's see what this does so this yeah this is like a tiny fraction of an ugga here like whatever you can whatever you can do when you're twisting the the end of a the screwdriver shaft there we go that's triggering now okay the end of the <clears throat> the end of the lever there was hitting on the frame so that was keeping it that's probably why it was in the instructions the other way <laughs> excuse me <laughs> the builds for these small printers always look so fiddly, but so want to build one. They're not bad. It's not that bad. Little space constraint, but my V0.1 is currently printing parts for a second V0.1 as somebody made me buy Sparkle Obsidian Black. I think if anybody didn't really need, have a need to build a V0 right now, um, they might want to wait just a little bit. And on the same token, if you were thinking about ordering a kit, and I don't care what kit, um, whatever kit, I wouldn't worry about it too much, whether it's going to be compatible or not. That's just my opinion. It's a micro dugga, a micro dugga, that's right. Milli duggas and micro duggas, that's probably micro dugga levels. What direction did they, since I'm going to follow the instructions, I'm going to put this one in that way. Since me not following the instructions last time did not work out well for me. Okay, so that's probably, I, I probably did a milli dugga on that one. We're going to bend these Bend these wires out of the way so we can hit that so we don't get in the way of the X step or the extruder stepper that goes there. And and then when this goes here, oh, that's a that's a trigger right there. And I probably want it to trigger a little further. So let's move. Let's thread this in. Looked like you might have. I actually don't know for sure, Kyle. I don't because nobody knows because it's the prep is still being done. So if we set a, an actual known date, we're going to miss it. So it is still just a guess. <laughs> Looks like you might have misplugged one of the heat bed wires from the angle we saw. Would you mind checking before powering on? Misplugged one of the heat bed wires. No, they're they're both into the center. Yeah, we're good. Thank you. I, I do appreciate the keeping an eye out. It looks like I'm OK. OK, I'm adjusting this right now just because I can see where it's triggering versus the end of travel. So we're at least going to get closer. And I can hear when the switch triggers. And I want it to trigger right as the carriage hits this XY joint. just a little bit more.
That'll be good right there. Okay. <sighs> now with Sensualist, you don't have to worry about that because it'll just bump against the end. But that is okay. Now we have a piece here for the Z end stop. And this goes here. Now for the Z end stop, the instructions say to remove the lever. It's pre pre removed. And then as this part is right here with those holes biased down, this part goes in with the with the the actual switch that way. So Thomas, thanks for gifting the memberships. You'll put a nut on the back of that stopper, right? You can see it moving with vibrations. It's, I don't think it's gonna move. I mean, honestly, this is gonna get converted within a short time. Thread it into plastic, it shouldn't vibrate. If it's vibrating, if it's vibrating, then my settings on this printed part was way off. Okay, so that is on there, and then this is gonna go right like that, right into there. So I am actually going to put that on right now. Hi, Jason, things are going well. My headache is starting to go away, and we are making progress on the build. So we are gonna use M3 by 10s and a couple of nuts. And I'm gonna use regular nuts for this because they're easier to slide. And we wanna be able to move this around and we get full access to the, we get full access to the, to the slot they go in. So I'm not gonna use the special post install nuts for this. I'm gonna use the M3 by 10. Throw this in here, and then a regular hex nut here is fine. And just partially thread that on. Beat inches at Ugga Dugga sounds like some words from the Stone Age episode of SpongeBob. Hi, Max. Just one screw on the X switch. Yes, there isn't enough room for the head on the other screw. Um, there is a little nub in the plastic that helps locate this so it doesn't shift. Hi, Voron versus Prusa versus Bamboo Labs. Which one would you use? I am going to give my completely biased opinion of Voron. There we go. That slides in there. And then I am going to move this to the top. Let's see if we can get a, a view here. Yeah, that's pretty good. Well, once we, oh, let's go up here, that. So I'm gonna go all the way up here to the top. Cause I want this to pretty much almost touch those the ends uh, when this is at Z min, at least right now. And then I can actually trigger that and tighten the screw from the side here. So now, now that's triggering right, right there, right at the top. And we tighten both of these. Don't forget the completely biased opinion of Voron. Trident is the best Voron. That's absolutely right. Okay, so we may have to adjust that. This is where I'm gonna start with, um, depending on where the tool head um, ends up, but that is triggering on the screw. We can adjust it with this um, screw that's in, the, in, the, in this mount here. You can kind of see it here. This screw is where we do the fine adjust for that. But right now, that puts us right at triggering at the top of the rails. Okay, now we can put on the back panel. So let's set this on its front. 
Now, one of the things I did off camera because these this paper, this paper, um, this paper backing on these acrylic panels is is not really the fun, the most fun peel. I pre peeled it. <laughs> so there is a notch here for the Z end stop. And we just want to make sure that we get this in. So one of the one of the pre install or the nuts that we put in before are these these and I use the the post install ones. So now we're going to place or position those. Hi, Steve. Hi, Charlie. You can read my name as Yevin. Hi, Yevin. Thank you. I appreciate that. I'm interested if you get the same wobble in your tool head as I did with the LDO rail. I had to do the MGN 9 mod to correct it. I do not get that when I use, um, I've used the Honey Badger rail and uh, another one. Um, it's not around anymore. Um, this is a high wind rail and I'm hoping we don't get it. That's the intent is not to get it. I'm gonna pre-locate these. That's probably about where it goes. Kinda, kinda put this in here and kind of, oh, I had that one right. This one is gonna go about there. And then this side, I mean, I guess it's gonna go to the same spot, so. Right about there, and right about there. Okay, so let me wipe this off because I'll use my nice clean shirt to get all the crud off. And try not to touch that front piece, front side as I'm putting this in. There we go. That goes like that, and how close was I? It's pretty close. Can now use this to get to those. There we go. Grady, thanks for coming a member. Okay, what size screws am I supposed to use for this? Flip the printer, align the preloaded nuts into position. It's easier if you don't have to fight gravity. These these post install nuts make it pretty easy with those uh, little printed spacers in there too. And in three by sixes. I'm not tightening these yet. Nothing engraved on this panel. And you know what? I was going to engrave, do some engraving on the back panel, uh, but it's not, it's not gonna work. And I'll show I'll show you why when we get there. So I didn't. This isn't, I had planned on engraving a panel. It was never gonna be this panel because things get attached to this and you wouldn't be able to see it. Uh, maybe from the front side, uh, but I don't know what I would put there. I didn't have any great ideas. Um, but the back panel was my plan. And as I was pulling things apart, uh, removing um, the, the protective wrapping on them, I realized the back ones are not going to work. Or at least not, I don't have settings for it because the rear panel is smoked. <laughs> So, you should laser cut a Charlie on this panel. <laughs> okay, so now with those just threaded in, I am going to center this up and mostly centering it side to side because it should be flush with the side extrusions. I did plan to do that, but I didn't realize they were going to be different. I, I assumed they were going to be this matte acrylic, and they were not. Okay, so I'm centering it up and down, 
side to side, making making sure it's flush. And then these do not need to be very tight. It is acrylic. It can be brittle. Just a quarter of an ugga dugga. Just so it doesn't shift around. Hi, Netanel. I'm looking for some lube suggestions. What should I use for the extruder and Trident Z screws? Is the EP1, EP2 stuff recommended? That's fine. You can also use the, um, uh, that's, that's kind of squeezed out. Whatever the, the super lube stuff is, works well for, for that as well too. Hey, Nate P. Hi, David. Okay. You know, some of the fingerprints out. So we have Z end stop, Y end stop that's going to sneak down from a panel up here, and then our two steppers. Maybe able to engrave through the protective film. The problem is I only have those panels that are that style, so I don't have any test pieces. But I didn't want to screw it up. Okay, so those are in notch for the Z end stop wires. How often do I relube my bearings? Um, not very. If I'm doing a full rebuild, I'll check them and 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 clean them and lube them. Printhead. Okay, let's set this set this aside and build our mini afterburner. We have some heat sets and an idler. Now there are heat sets going into printed spacers for the um, for this, but we want the it comes with some machine spacers, I think. Okay, so we are going to go through a bunch of these heat sets. So we have parts. We have mini afterburner. There are. So no heat sets to go in there. No heat sets to go in there. It's been a while since I built one of these. So it looks like I'm just none. That... Oh, there's two that go in there. Two that go in there and one that go in there. And that's it. Okay. If it sounds like a proof they need lube. <laughs> Let's turn that down. I only need three heat sets for this step. Yeah, I'm pretty pleased with the color too. So this is Sparta 3D Sparkle Purple Mist. It was a choice between this and KVP Proper Purple in terms of purples I had. Heating up the iron. Those go in there. One. And two. Make sure this one's in all the way. And then the the shuttle, a little guidler shuttle, latch shuttle. Why is KVP popular with Boron community? Because they have a large color selection and usually good quality. They've had some hiccups though, so they they're, they're, they need to get their act together. Uh, I've heard that it's getting, it's better, but I, I have supply from a long time ago. I haven't bought KVP in a while. KVP is good filament, but they did have some hiccups. They absolutely did. They they need to earn some, some goodwill back. I ordered $50 of microfits from AliExpress, but they're all wrong. Or do you recommend getting Microfit 3 that isn't dollars each? Well, I, I usually, honestly, I order mine from um, Digikey because the I don't need a ton of them, 
and the real Molex are better. I've removed removing pins from them. It's a lot easier removing them from the genuine Molex than from the generics. Okay, we are, we have the Guidler, and then we have a bunch of parts. So we have bearings and set screws and tubing. Oh my. BMG parts, genuine Bontech BMG parts. Already pre, the back of this is already pre-ground to the right size. So we need the one without a set screw. And then we have the idler or the roller bearings and a three millimeter shaft. So let's go, oh, I'm already all the way in. I tried some genuine JST XH and found that those work better too. That's something I should get to. Most of what I have for JSTXH are generics. Um, pH, it's really important to have good quality pH connectors, even smaller, because the, the bad ones are really hard to remove once they're plugged in. <laughs> Derek, <laughs> my pin removal technique for Microfit is to get the side cutters, cut it off and throw it in a bin. <laughs> You've seen me remove pins from microfits. I have a pretty good success rate. Okay. I have some, I think this is lube that was included in my, the LDO V0.1 kit that I got over a year ago before they could, they decided they couldn't include this because it was having, making uh, problems in shipping. So there is more than enough here. Um, but I'm going to take the, the roller bearing and put a little bit in the end and then this shaft, I'm going to plug the end here and push this through. And as I push that through, it will squeeze the, the force, the grease into the, um, into the rollers. And then I'm just going to move it around with my fingers a little bit. I'm going to do the same there, drop it on my mat. If I push this through, you see that? I don't know if you could see that, but then I'm just going to just coat those in a little bit of grease. Grab a paper towel. Hey, Daniel. Hey, my butt. Thanks for being here. OK, so that goes in there and then this goes into just snaps into the housing there. I'll make sure that spins freely. That part is good. <sighs> and for DuPont, you need to have the right crimpers too. So I, we're going to have a discussion on crimpers. I don't want to take the time to have a discussion on crimpers today. Um, I did buy another, I've, I've been buying a lot of crimpers. I bought these for DuPont's. It's the IWIS SN025. These are not in stock in the Amazon US, but it took about a week and a half to get them. These make a really nice DuPont crimp, I gotta say. We will have a longer discussion on, on um, crimpers and where for not, if PA09s may be wonderful, but not if you buy them from Amazon and they're made in Taiwan. And I'll just stop that discussion right there. But we will have a longer discussion on that later. Uh, because the mini afterburner is small and tough to get to things, I am going to put just a right here right now. I'm going to put just a tiny bit of this lube on the drive side of this gear and it will distribute to the other gear and then I won't have to worry about the other one. So making sure we don't get any grease over here, we are just going to put a little bit through there and that will grease those, that connection.
This crimpers for Molex are the Nipec ones for sure. Yeah, the, the, having good purpose-made crimpers is worth it, I think. So, okay, that's there. The next part we're going to put on, where'd my mouse go? We are going to place some bearings. So we're going to use this. We're going to place these MR85 bearings. Maker Marecki, Jason from LDO sent me the S1 upgrade kit for the V0.1 and I was going to start tearing down my first LDO V0.1 tomorrow, three weeks vacation. Should I wait for V0.2? I can't make a promise that 0.2 is gonna be out within enough time for you to do that during your vacation. Um, I just can't do that. So, so I am putting, using the, the gear here to press in the bearing. Then I'm gonna grab probably the end of my, there we go, press that all the way in, all the way in and flush. And then the other side goes into here. I'm probably not gonna be able to use that because I don't have a thing on there yet, but what can I use? The end of, the end of one of these. Not flat enough. Maybe I'll put it on once I put this on. This is gonna go on like this, and then I need a grub screw. The kit comes with three, that's nice, you only need one. And I have enjoyed my PO nines, but prior I had the cheapest set on Amazon. So I I have, so I have now, thanks to a thanks to a viewer, I have a pair of the genuine made in Japan PAO nines. And um, I'm putting this on here just kind of temporarily so I can press this bearing into place. Um, I have a set of the PAO nines. I still have the Made in Taiwan PO, PAO 9s. I haven't returned those yet. I'm still within my return window yet, though. And we'll cover that. But. Hi, Timo. So for V0 frames, we still have 25 to 40 pieces of purple and green. If you want to get that color, talk to your reseller and make an order for it. Tell them LDO support it. Hope reseller will help. So if you hear that, if you want a purple or green frame, they have a few of them. Okay, so that, that bearing I just pressed into place. This is not in its final position because I think we need to put tighten that on after um, everything's kind of assembled. Nate, thanks for becoming a member. So I keep getting drawn, in, drawn into these crimper discussions, but PA09s and anything that's built, anything that's designed to crimp a JST or a microfit is not good for DuPonts. Let's just put it that way. It is a difference between a crimp that does this around the insulation side versus one that does this. So microfits and DuPonts do this to the insulation or microfits and JSTs do this to the insulation side. They all do this to the conductor side, but the insulation side. DuPonts require this where they wrap around. They actually wrap around kind of like that. So anything made for microfits or JSTs shouldn't be used for DuPonts. It'll work, you can make it work and it'll probably be fine. But if you're looking for a proper, a proper crimp. Um, okay, so we have that. And now component prep, we have a PTFE tube. So seven millimeters of PTFE tube should stick out the bottom of the part. I don't know how that is supposed to work. We're gonna not follow that instruction. Maybe to my trouble, but. <laughs> so we have some, 
peppercorn tubing that came with the kit. They do have pre-applied Loctite, Stephen. The, all the grub screws in the kit have pre-applied Loctite. I, I don't see if you can get a hint of blue there or not, but there, there's blue Loctite on them. What do we have? 400 people, awesome. Could you use, oh yeah, they don't fit in the, it's, you have to really crimp the DuPonts down to get them to fit in the housings, you're right. When, you, when they do the proper crimp, they're easy. I just did some, I just did some last night actually, the proper crimper. Okay, we are using a Revo Voron in here. It has a depth of, I think it was about six, seven millimeters, 7.3 millimeters of PTFE, um, the PTFE dot bottoms out about seven millimeters in. The thickness of this part here is, I think, about 6.5 millimeters. And then the spot in here, um, oh, well, that's different. Than, that's different than the CAD. Okay, so I was wrong. The CAD has this uh, depth, 8 millimeters. So I did all that math and came up with 21.8 millimeters that I needed to cut this tube. Now I was going off a of CAD. This part has changed. <laughs> it's not in the CAD I had. So it is also going to be different than these instructions. Good thing a new version is coming out before too long. We're just gonna wing it. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. Um, what do we wanna do here? That is, so, the CAD says, let me see. The CAD says that should have been eight millimeters when this is actually less than two. So if I take six millimeters off of what I thought I was gonna need to do, we're looking at about a 15 millimeter long PTFE tube. So we're gonna cut this to 15. I'm going to use my little jig that I made ages and ages ago. And my jig is 15 millimeters, so I'm going to make it this long. I'm going to just make this flush with the end and cut it flush the other side and call it good. Oops. Improv, yep. Now I know why, I know why this has been changed because the assembly for this, this is probably the biggest pain in the assembly for the mini afterburner is tweaking the PTFE tube as you're putting the hot end in to, to enter that, that hole right there. So. <sighs> Nobody expects <laughs> running changes. <laughs> So the next part, before I go too far and, sh and, and shifting around here a little bit, let's grab, let's just grab some random filament here and checking for this. So you wanna make sure your filament path is free. I know there's a blob on the end here, so. This goes through, this goes through but it is um, a little snug. So the kit comes with a two millimeter drill bit to clear this out. And depending on, I, I'm thinking, I'm hoping, well, maybe I'll just use a drill. Might've been able to do this by hand, but. Oddbot, thank you. Last stream before Christmas, happy holidays. Thank you, Daniel, I appreciate that. Drink fund or Charlie toy fund. <laughs> So I'm gonna not turn, not go all out on this. We're just going to barely run that through and then see how we are here. There we are. Now that's clear. So I don't need to go any further on that. And it should just, there's a curve here. 
but yeah, that I'm clear, comfortable with that now. But it came with this drill bit. So I used the one it came with. And put this away. Ryan, thanks for becoming a member. Honestly, I wish the Orbiter was a base for the Mini Afterburner instead of BMG. I really hate the BMG guts, so many issues for me. Yeah, I mean, it's it, it depends on the quality of the parts. Even coming from Bontech, it depends on the quality of their machining. Um, there's a lot to that, for sure. Colin, thanks for gifting memberships. And Zombie, thank you. Perfect use for my reamers. I don't have a two millimeter reamer, and I'd probably want even a smaller one, technically. I'd probably want like a 1.9 millimeter reamer. But that's not critical. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna cut this flush, because my my piece here is 15 millimeters, and my my calculations say I need a 15 millimeter um, tube. So I'm gonna cut this, cut this flush, and then I'm gonna take my chamfer tool that I've talked about before, and this is just a 60 millimeter chamfer that I only use it for this, so it stays sharp. And I'm just gonna chamfer the inside edge of that while it's still in this fixture. We end up a little chamfer there, and that's gonna go to this side, and then the filament is less likely to catch on it. Okay, so loosen this up and just push it out with the other piece of filament, or P PTFE. So then this can go in there, and that's where that's gonna go. <sighs> All my metric drill bits are reversed. Reversed, interesting. Mini Sherpa is the best mod for V01. I haven't tried any of those. I have not. Always cut away from yourself. Oh, it's, that's fine. I'm, I'm a very controlled cut with, with things that I have good purchase on. <laughs> you can find. So Bartos, if you look in the description, there is a link to my Voron users GitHub repository. And that is in the, um, the jigs portion of it. It is publicly available in my Voron users GitHub. So there's a couple of GitHubs I'm maintaining now. Um, the Voron users GitHub is gonna be where I put things like this. Um, my own personal GitHub, I'm gonna put things that I'm prepping to hopefully push to the Voron users. But it's the quicker, just get things out there. I can put whatever I want out there. Um, I don't have to worry about it being perfectly formatted and have a description and all that. Just, just so I can put things out there without having to go through the extra steps to put it out on Voron users. The goal is um, for the mods.vorondesign.com site um, to put it on Voron users so they get there, but still. I stabbed myself in the palm of my hand cutting a bagel one time. Yeah? Yep. Okay, where are we at? We are at two hours. We gotta get moving. So that, so now we, we put, and we're gonna take this, this gear off the BMG here, and we are going to partially assemble this in outside of the, of the whole extruder assembly first. So if we go, we're gonna take this, and the, the, the BMG gear is gonna go here, and then this one is gonna go this, this way, and we're not gonna worry yet about lining that up. I am gonna line it up with the flat spot in the, on there though, because there is enough room for that gear to get through that hole. Now that, that, that is a, a short-term problem, if you, if you get my meaning there. That's a short-term problem. But right now in Mini Afterburner, we have to worry about this. Oh, there we go. <laughs> um, PTFE length we dealt with. Check the orientation, that's correct. 
Now we can put a bunch of fans into here. Fans. Hi, Golden Jaguar. Welcome. This comes with four fans. We have part cooling fans, these style. And two of those. We have a 30 by 30 by 10 millimeter fan, which is going to be for this build, a um, case fan, and then a 30 by 30 by six millimeter fan for the hot end. That's what we're going to use here. The logo faces the wrong way when you use the spool. Okay, so we are going to place our part cooling fans first. And there are modeled into this some spots. A little bit of, a little bit of fuzziness there. Um, modeled into this are some spots for, so that one goes like this. So it faces out, that means the the fan wires need to come up the back here and do something like that. Now, I think these wires need to go there as well. So let's put the, let's put this guy in here first, maybe. Like I said, it's been a while since I've assembled one of these. Uh, this goes, so this goes with the, I think this will have to go down here like this. That'll snap into there. Wire facing this bottom corner, because then it's going to follow along this little recess in the printed part, and then up the back here. Like that. And then the, this part is going to go in here. And capture all of these wires in there. There. Just like that. And then your two wires for the part cooling fan. And this one is labeled as hot end fan. Wire to the bottom right. Yep. And then this. Oh, oh, crap. I just cracked that piece. Well, be careful because you can break the part. What happened? I gotta. That sucks. I'm not gonna be able to fix that this stream. So I'm gonna put this in here a little, try to keep these wires out of the way. That's not gonna be structural, but it is, it is a bummer that it broke. There we go. Dang it. It'll be fine. I'm not happy about that. And you can't really see it. But I'm not going to be able to fix it. <laughs> part mishap. I'm not even going to worry about super glue. Because that's not a part that matters. And this one is straightforward. It just goes, it just goes straight in. Okay. A drop of acetone would absolutely work. I'm not going to worry about it. It's not going to be seen. You won't even be able to tell. Okay, so fans are in. Careful with that. Wiring guide. And then the hot end's going to go in here. So which side? I think I'm going to put the hot end to this side. I'm going to have to bend bend the insulation or the strain relief a little bit. So I'm going to grab some some pliers as a strain relief. And this is the smooth side of these pliers. And I'm just going to bend this up. Up a bit. We saw nothing. Yes. At least the front didn't fall off. But we know it's there now. That would drive me nuts. It, it don't don't worry. It's gonna drive me nuts too. But there's nothing I can do about it right now. 
If I'm gonna finish this build, I can't do anything about it. So. Okay. Revo Hot Ends. The serial number label here takes up a lot of space. Tempted to cut it off and get rid of it, but it has a serial number on it. That's heat shrink tubing. We are going to shrink it. Now it takes up a lot less space. So, I mean, the, the other thing that makes that whatever, this will become a 0 0.2. So it's going to get reprinted. Now I need the readers to read the serial number. Yes. That is, well, I, if I hold it way back here, I, I can read it, mostly. <laughs> so now I've got to put my PTFE tube back in here with that chamfered side up. And then this can go in here. And that's going to stick in there just a little bit. So now what size, that can just stay there. What size screws are these going to need to be? By eights? Button heads by eights? Yeah, by eights will work. And there's three of them. There's only room for three of them. So let's put that back on there. And throw these in here. You only need the serial number if you need warranty work. This is true. What features generally will the V0.2 have? Well, the big one is gonna be mini stealth burner. And mini stealth burner is very nice. So much easier to assemble. All those little things, the off-center fans, that's much better. I take a picture on the phone and zoom in all the time. <laughs> all the time. Okay, so then this is going to come over here and all this gets zip tied up. There, there's a there's a zip tie spot somewhere. Oh, I thought there was. Is there no longer? Maybe it's on the maybe it's on the carriage. Does the mini stealth burner improve anything or is it just cosmetic? It improves assembly, it improves cooling. It improves all the things. Assembly is the biggest one, really, honestly. Okay, hot end is in. Now we can start putting, so we need M3 by 35 screws. Is that these guys? So we're gonna follow this part of the instructions. What did I repeat out loud? <laughs> Any updates to the switch wire coming? I'm about to start my build waiting until after Christmas. Nothing imminent. There's lots of ideas being tossed around, but nothing imminent on switch wire. How compatible will the V0S1 kit be with V0.2? Very, very. If I've partially assembled a V0.1, should I just stop and wait for... I'm, I, I, I hesitate to tell anyone to wait 
because it could be two months from now. There may be a problem found. Um, I would hesitate to tell anybody to wait. Okay, three M3 by 35s it says to put through here. So, there are bits and pieces that are gonna go in here, but three M3 by 35s. Oh, that was a 40. How did those get mixed up? That MR bearing I already put in. The Guidler and the shuttle go in. So, Guidler goes on here. I need my M3 reamer just to clean this up a little bit. Need that again. Now that goes on there nicely. Shuttle goes in here like that. So I just done tap tap on my. Oh yeah. How do you like the tap? Have you start? Have you actually printed with it yet? I just started building. No point in waiting. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, uh, rebuilding to a 0 0.2 isn't that bad. I've done it a few times now. What's up with the? What's up with the Fazetic Voron 0.1 kit? I have no idea. What what is up with it? Okay, so idlers assembly in place. That in place. Move the screws forward. And then this whole thing goes in there. So let's, so now this whole thing is gonna go in like that. Now, how do I get in there to line up the, the filament path? There we go. That's in there, but how do I line that up? So maybe I'm gonna need to pull this off again. This is the this is the fiddliness that is the mini afterburner. Because now that that's on. There we go. <laughs> okay, I don't. Oh, mini stealth burner can't get here soon enough. Lining this up with the the right spot in the push the drive gear backward. Push the drive gear all the way to back to help screws forward. Let me see. Put a piece of filament to help line it up, but I need to be able to get to that screw. Let's see what they actually say to do. The drive gear is mounted opposite of how it is usually mounted. Make sure the grub screw has sufficient contact with the flat. There's no real instructions here. So here's what we will do. We will leave the, let's put this in here like this. Let's put that in there. Now I can actually see it. Then let's grab a piece of filament. Grab a piece of nice and bright filament I can see. Zarp, this is um, Sparta 3D Sparkles Purple Mist. Okay, so now I'm gonna eye in here and honestly, it's right on right now. It, it is right on. There is nothing for me to, there's nothing for me to change. Looking at that, you can't get a good angle to see it, but I am comfortable with how that is. So I'm gonna leave it and tighten this down. Okay, 
Now we can go through and reassemble this. Hey, holla holla. Okay, where did this go? This goes here. Shuttle goes in here. And now this is gonna go back in here. Just like that. Now, this is gonna go on here, there, right like that. And then, let's go back to where we were. Those go there. This is all insert an angle and push into place. With that shallower spot in this mid body, it is easier to push that into place. Push the screws back. And then two M3 by 30s in the top to hold this all together. With the shuttle, with the latch in place. So latch in place and then M3 by 30 in here. And that's gonna go into this heat set in the back. Another M3 by 30 here. This will hold this thing together. The PTFE tube is in, yes. I did make sure. These do not get tight. You wanna make sure that you can still actuate that, uh, that latch. Those screws are always a pain in the neck. They're, always, they're trying to fall out. We can put our little tension screw on here now. There we go. Does Charlie snore? He does. Charlie does snore. It's 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 very funny. There we go. Okay. So that is the that bit. The BMG thumb screw is in. Our chef must not extend past the printed body as it was rub on the motor. It is not. It is good. Dennis, thanks for gifting the members memberships. Charlie does snore. Okay. So now remove the thumb screw, loosen the top screws, and remove the back plate. Why for? Oh, now we got to put it on the put it on the print head. Okay. Okay, so let's clean up a little bit here. Possible to finish push some plastic today. That's the goal. We need to we need to finish today. It the the impact on my um well the impact is significant because I'm not streaming on Christmas Day. So if we don't do a Christmas day, I don't want to do a stream where I'm giving away a whole V0.1 kit on New Year's Day, which is the next Sunday, which would mean we would be pushing this back to the next weekend in January, which is basically two full weeks since I'm not streaming on Christmas anyway, um, of pushback on all my other projects. So. <coughs> Excuse me. Talking a lot yesterday and talking a lot today. Okay. Maybe we go this way because now we're going to pull some of this apart. So that's why this needs to be today. It's, it would be very tough. Um, on the rest of my schedule. And that's all driven by me. Nobody's telling me I shouldn't give away a, a, a V0 kit on New Year's Day. I just don't think it's a good idea. Okay, so this guy comes off of there and it's gonna get bolted on to here. And we are going to do that with two M10, M2 by 10 self tappers. And 
and those go into this. There's a couple of threading into plastic holes already there. Making sure I'm, I can see. There we are. Um, did I get all the, yes, okay. There's heat sets back there. Snug, but not tight to the point of stripping. Win a V2 or a Trident. We are winning a V0.1 S1 kit. This kit that I'm building is what's what's going to be up in 45 minutes. OK, so that goes there. And then the whole tool head goes on there and we tighten it all down and then we're going to put the stepper on. So now the whole tool head. With all the wires up and out of the way. Let's get the, the bed out of the way. So now that kind of snaps into there. Let's put these on first. And I'm not even going to tighten them. I'm just threading them in so things get held into place. And then all of these should thread in. Yeah. Nice. And then just snug. There we go. It goes there. This is going to go back in here. That feels good. The whole thing is moving. The front will fall off, what? Wish the V-Zero used socket head and not button heads. Some screws could be substituted for socket heads, but there isn't the depth on a lot of things. Just that extra 0.5 millimeters on the Allen makes them so much more pleasant to use. Yeah. <laughs> if you type awesome, not into chat, the YouTube video progress bar goes flashing RGB. Really? <laughs> Tempted to get an electric screwdriver. I have a project with 200 plus M3s. What should I get? For the most part, I like the ES15. I would prefer discrete forward and back buttons instead of the gyro. That's probably my biggest complaint about it, but it seems to have adequate torque for most of what I do. When I remember to use it. Okay, we have tool head on. Avoid, avoid ball ends with button head screws if possible. Yes. There are some spots in here for some zip tie wire management, but we're not there yet. The awesome kin kinder egg feels like something Timmet would have made. <laughs> Okay, so now we're going to put the stepper or the stepper on. Wires going up. Can I get away with doing this with wires going down? No. Okay, wires going up, I guess. All of these, oops. So what I'm doing is pushing, pushing these wire, the end stop wires out of the way. And then this is going to go in here. And there's just not enough room for those to go down. So we're going to go up. And then we're going to do, what is it? M3 by eights into the, hold that in. So M3 
some three by eights to hold that on. We're gonna have to get some wires cut and we will have to do some crimping on this. There is a, let's unlatch that, there we go. And the side. Now, how can we test the backlash on that gear? We might be able to do this with some filament. Let's see. So what, what we don't have access to in this, in, in mini afterburner is the, um, is the, ooh, why is that not going through? Is the, um, the the we can't get to the bmg gear so we can't tell if things are lining up or not and this should be going in this should just push right all the way through but it's not why is it not there we go okay so now i can get that in there now and push back and forth and i can feel a little bit of backlash in those gears so i'm going to just leave it right like that I don't know if you can hear that. You probably can't, but I can feel it and I can hear it. This pushes all the way through. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna go with that. And if we have to adjust it later, we will. Hmm. I thought the S1 came with an Orbiter V2. No, we are giving away Orbiter V2s as part of the LDO giveaway for these streams, but it's not part of the build. Would I be far off in guessing a V0.1 to V0.2 kit would cost less than 100 pounds? Probably, if I had to guess, 90% less. Well, well, let me, with some caveats, based on what's actually going to come in V0.2, you can do it for almost nothing. Let me just say that. You could do it for almost nothing. Um, and then we have the strain relief, which we're not going to do because we have a tool headboard on here and cable management. And now we're on to electronics. Okay. Let's go back here. I am going to, how tall is this? What can we do to? Because this having this on right now is actually a bad, is annoying. What can I use as spacers? I need spacers. Spacers. I don't know what I'm going to use for spacers. Maybe a couple of spools. Trident front idlers done. I missed the cursor, Dunar. I wasn't looking for it. Did anybody else catch it? Anybody else catch the cursor that doesn't know where it is already? <clears throat> okay, we are going to do things like put the power supply in place and that kind of stuff. For general info, we're gonna switch back over to the LDO docks and go to the wiring guide for the V0S1 kit. Filament rolls might be the best idea there. Filament rolls, I don't know if I have same size boxes. The extrusion top head is too nice to miss out on, especially with the cam lock, so that will cost a bit. Yes, that's true, but it's not required. You could get away all most of the benefits of 0 0.2 without that. You are not, Ivan, you do not hit the mark. No, I'm, I don't have that level of excitement. Okay, wiring guide. So wiring, wiring the picobilical, 
wiring the deck panel. So we're gonna have some wiring for the power inlet. Most of it's already done, or some of it's already done. So we have the power inlet here, and we are going to check to see if the fuse is already in here, because that's caught me before. There, there is the fuse already in there. And then we have power. So what do we have? We have ground right here. Then we have, what is brown? Brown is live, okay. Well, it matches up with the brown wire that's already there, so. That goes there, and then neutral goes there. I checked for the fuse, yep, fuse is there. Everything is plugged in. Nice and secure. I think we can snap this onto here. Oops. We're gonna have a heat set to put in here. That's okay. Okay, well, let's put the heat set in. Did you see the Trident with tool changers? I have seen Tridents with tool changers. That is cool. So, power. Where are we at? Half an hour until the drawing. Links are in the description. How many entries do we have? Do we have, do we have nearly enough entries? We have enough entries. We have a lot of entries. Must be present to win, remember. Must be present to win. We give you two minutes. Don't be going to get a sandwich. Will mini stealth, stealth burner have a logo light? I have fell in love with my 2.4 stealth burner after realizing I can make it the logo color match the Super Slicer preview when it's printing different extrusion types. Um, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna comment on that. There's certain things that just have to be waited on and I don't want to make anyone excited. Like button is a bit behind. It is a bit behind. You're right. Have the have the have the subscribers caught up with the likes? That's the question. <laughs> um where are we? Must be present to win. <laughs> already got my pizza and munching on it now perfect okay that heat set is in <clears throat> let me find a couple of same width pools those are not the same width aha i'll go old atomic spool here and a KVP spool here. Let's go this way. Actually, let's go. We're going to need some. We're going to need some space here. OK, all this stuff can go back there. Hi, one Carlos. YouTube rearrange things, look at live streams instead of videos. So my homepage, uh, I changed my homepage to show the the recent live streams on the homepage. So hopefully that takes care of some of that rearranging confusion. <laughs> okay, I am going to, we're gonna attach the power supply and wire raceways and stuff. So I'm gonna clean some of my grubby fingerprints off the bottom here. I'm gonna 
gonna grab the power supply. So this is another part of the S1, and this comes if you, if you won the 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 S1 upgrade parts kit. This is gonna come with it, and this is a Mornson brand, which I'm told is a good brand power supply, um, 200 watt thing. It's a little bigger, so we're gonna have to be careful about our positioning here. And there's some documentation here in the LDO docs that talk about that. So we got the preparing the power supply. Ooh, it is uh, either I set it or it's, oops, it's been set to 115 volts. So if we scroll down, placing the power supply. So this is important. Add a few strips of VHB tape to the underside and place a power supply and wire duct in the location shown below while keeping mind of these points. We want at least five millimeters between the back of the um, the stepper and the power supply, and probably about 20 millimeters in the front. Now this rear measurement is more critical. You need enough room for wires to go through there. So make sure to leave a small gap of about 20 millimeters between the front extrusion and deck. This is to provide clearance for a display. We're not gonna be installing a display on this. I want a display on it at some point, but it's not gonna get one as part of this build series. I will probably put one on when we upgrade it to V0.2. Hey, Polar Ted. You're here just in time to go to lunch. Okay, so that is where we're at. We're gonna take some of our VHB tape. We are going to give it a little bit more than five millimeters there because I know that we we have enough space to do that. I'm gonna go, like they said, about three three strips of tape along the the backs the, along the evenly spaced on this power supply. So I'm gonna go there. I'm gonna go in the middle. And then one more. Hey, I just switched from my cell phone to desktop and noticed about a 20 second delay between the two streams. Maybe worth considering during the response to prizes phase. Okay. We always give, it always ends up being more than two minutes. Either I forget to start a timer or, or something. Okay. Production PSU will come with FPC type for EU regulation, no selection switch. Okay. So what can we use? I feel like I want to use something I want to use something as a spacer. Do I have something a little in between? In between on the space? Maybe something as simple as this. This is, this is eight millimeters. I'm going to set that right there. Yeah, I'm just going to set that right there as my, as my guide. Charlie is on the move. He's doing his business. <laughs> okay, let's see. I can't see is the problem. I I I, I need I need to engage Yuri mode, but like mini Yuri mode. I'm just going to, you're going to, you're going to get a bit of a view of my hair, but that's just the way it is. They say five millimeters there and about 20 here. So they say about here. Oh, the other thing I wanted to do is if you notice this, this panel moves around in here. So I kind of want to move it all the way in one direction and then just kind of get it about centered. 
So something about like that, I think. Just making sure. Oh, now he wants to go eat. So he's starting his cycle. We're just gonna go with it. Here we go. If I remember the extrusion cover is five to seven millimeters. So there we go. We'll have we'll have about eight millimeters there of, of space. And let me move this this off and let Charlie out. Oh, would you ever do a shop tour video? Absolutely. I my shop is in no shape for a tour at this moment, though. <laughs> OK, that can go there. That is on. Now we can probably place our power inlet over here. That way we can hook up our power. And then we can place our raceways because they have us they have us placing a raceway across there. Um, but if I if I cut that shorter, I can just run the AC wires along this outer this outer sides. This doesn't need to go all that that distance. So let's put the let's put this in place which we're going to need two, um, two of the post install nuts. We finally got to see Nero's messy shop. Yeah, my shop is my shop is pretty messy. Here, let's go in. These post install nuts are neat. Last stream, I, I went over them in detail. So they get they get one of those and one of these little printed pieces each. Charlie's already wanting back in. That means he's going to be he's going to be needy. OK, and then this goes in. I use some pliers to just kind of push that right over there, like that. Oops. Like that. And then position. That one goes right there. That one goes right there. Now, what size are these? These are probably by eights. Oh, well, that one's gone. <laughs> John, thanks for gifting memberships. So that's there. And this one, it's kind of there. Oh, I'm not hitting. Oh, that's a bummer. I must have knocked. Yep, knocked it out of the. Knocked it out of place. There we go. Seems like insulation on the garage door. Yep. I, I have some some fiberglass insulation there. Try to make it somewhat somewhat efficient in here. How am I keeping warm? It's not too bad in here. I have a little oil heater, radiant heater that helps. I've turned it off, actually, because it's starting to get a little warm.
I love watching your videos. I just ordered my LDO V2.4 R2 kit. Awesome. Have fun with the build. Okay. And then the screw goes in the side here and threads into a heat set that we put on that heat set that we put on the side. So now the that's set. Thanks for the content. Help me helped me on my 2.4 build. Awesome. Look at the shiny thing. It's all too common. Yes. Okay, so that's going to go there. And then this is going to plug into the power supply. Right in the front here. So live, neutral, and ground. So live goes right there. Neutral goes right there. And ground goes right there. And then all of these kind of bend over. That's pretty clean. R2 just came out, it feels like, like nine months ago. Well, almost a year ago. Because I was building, I was, I did the, I started almost exactly a year ago, I started the LDO V2.4 kit and I built it as an R2. Charlie wants back out, hold on. Okay. Okay, power supply in place. Now we're now I'm going to put these raceways in here, the the wire uh, channel. So I have the wire channel, and I'm going to go, I'm going to go here, and I'm going to take my my marker. Let's go with a. Let's just go with black. So I'm going to cut it about there and then at a at about a 45 degree angle. That should that should slot into there. So Are you designing a revision for a printer right now? No. I mean there's thoughts going around all the time on things. I'm just going to use my side cutters here because they work pretty well for this kind of thing. It just kind of breaks and I can clean up some of these edges and that should go right there. Yeah. I'm going to clean up the end here. Would be nice if my stealth burner came in the 2.4 and Trident kits. I think the new ones it is. If Jason or Cameron are around, they can confirm. That's gonna go right there. And then the other side, I'm gonna cut this one probably. I'm gonna aim for that to go right there. And I'm probably gonna just cut this one right here. And then at a 45 degree angle from here to cut that off. Can you take a V and fit just one piece? Well, no, because the angles are the wrong way. So now that'll go in there after I clean it up a bit. And then that's still about right on the on the other side. And 
one's going to go right there. Then a little piece of VHB on the bottom. Not what I asked, but it was too late anyway. Oh, probably. I, I, I'm, yeah, I try. I try, Bruno. You know I try. One and get rid of my, my mark. <sighs> Anyone already use chat GPT? I have no idea what that is. We don't need a lot of VHB for these. I'll probably do a couple of little, little pieces to kind of stitch it. Uses a little, would be a little more efficient on the VHB too. So it's always nice to have extra lying around. So that'll go there. Oh, is it foggy today? Salmon? I haven't been outside <laughs> and I don't have a window in here. Stealth burner is out like a proper release or is it still release candidate? I think um, that's a good question. It hasn't changed. I would consider it a proper release. It just isn't marked as such. But that's a good question. Okay, let me see if I can get a good view without. Well, I mean, you're you're gonna get the back back of my head. There's no there's no way around that. Put that on, and then the other one. What are we at? 10 minutes until the drawing. Is foggy here in Orangevale? Yeah. There we go. Okay, so those are on. Now we can continue with the wiring, I think. Charlie wants in, so let's cater to our feline overlord. <laughs> ah, snowy in Cleveland. Can I use cork dampers isolators for NEMA 17 on AB drive units to reduce vibrations, resonant sound? I'm just about to, I would not. I would not use any kind of compliant um, isolator for your for your AB steppers. You will end up with the stepper doing some sort of lean, which is going to affect your belt lining up. <clears throat> I would not. Nice and sunny in the Bay Area. That's a little backwards. <laughs> leave some space for the cover we should have some uh what mcu comes with this kit it comes with two it comes with an skr pico and then what they call a pico bilical we're about to get to that but it'll be after the drawing which is in 10 minutes hi cody Okay, throwing stuff away, cleaning up a little bit. Where are we at in their instructions? Oh, <sighs> that we have wiring. We just did the inlet wiring. And I avoided that routing there because this, this thick insulation here doesn't like to make a bend like that. I think it's pretty clean the way I did it. So I'm going to leave it like that. <laughs> I may not chat much, but love watching and learning. Awesome. If everybody chatted, I wouldn't be able to keep up. <laughs> Our 
530 people. So you, you know the you know the drawings coming up when the when the viewers start going up, start spiking. Hey deeds. After finish, check your work. So what we're gonna do probably we'll we'll preview the next steps, but what we'll actually do before um, before the drawing is make sure our power supply is working right. So will this power cord fit? Will it reach? I'm going to make sure this is turned off. Yep. And plug it in and get my multimeter and make sure we're hitting the right voltage. Just our first check here. Okay, so power it on. We got a green light on the power supply. That's a good sign. And then we have negative and positive. We're at 23.83. Now you can't see that because it's off camera, but I am going to bump that, bump that a little bit. This little pot here will adjust it. I have no idea which direction. So let's check that one. We're at 23.29. So I went the wrong way. Go that way. This doesn't really matter, but well, that's 20, 25. Go right there. 20, here, 24 .6, 24.6, 24.4, 24.2, 24.01. Oh it doesn't need to be that close. Oh 24.01. Ah. <sighs> Can we have a poll? Do you already own a 3D printer? We can, after the drawing though. Remind me. No sparks, it's working. We're gonna turn that off. Hey, Benja. Can you push it to the max and see where it goes? Nah, I don't wanna go. Don't wanna do that. 25 volts on the 24 volt power supply is pretty high. Sure, but I'm not sure what what the what the concerns are if you try to take them to the edge of their adjustability. Voltage with load can be lower. Yeah, like I said, it's not critical that, that just being close and at 23.8, I wanted it to read over 24 for no real reason. Hey, Ludwig, what do we got? Seven more minutes. Go ahead and unplug this. This is my short power cord. Where are we at? What can we do next? What can we start on? We're moving to the next step. Let's check the mains wiring correct. We checked it. Finish off below deck wiring. In this step, we will finish wiring and routing the remaining cables below the deck panel. Following, follow the diagram below to route the cables. So we have those that are coming through. So there is a little, so there is a little printed um, cover back here that holds a fan um, that we can probably work on. Forgot Sparks is content. <laughs> Sparks can also stop a build. So I do not want this build stopped. <laughs> you think it's okay to pull the x-axis extrusion without pulling the belts? No, no, there that that's all. Unless you relieve all the tension, then sure, but not under tension. Next printer recommendation, either a Trident or a Mercury One with Hydra. Is there a lot of difference other than the tool head? Seems fairly similar in mechanical, very similar 
I'm gonna give my bias opinion of Trident. Also, it's easier to enclose. I haven't tried an enclosure on a Mercury One, um, but with no disrespect to Mercury One and knowing that I was head of the pr Trident project, <laughs> I'm gonna say Trident. <laughs> Hi, Ver Veronique. I usually bump my 5 volt supply to 5.25 so our prize don't white out during low voltage. Yeah. Hi, Synapse. Bought a few tools watching Steve's build streams. Awesome. Okay, we have a couple of printed parts we can play with because we've got another three minutes. So LDO designed these pieces and they're designed to go on the back here somehow. I haven't actually messed with it. And they're also designed to slot together to kind of give themselves support. Um, Mercury one wasn't designed to be enclosed. It can be done, but it's not easy. Exactly. So um, I, I'm hoping to enclose mine, whether it's easy or not, but because I would like to print ABS with it. Um, or at least have a better um, setup for ABS. Let me move my spacers. Hey, it is a red spacer. So can I say spacers? I'm gonna put it in this orientation here first. I am un unable to enter information on the orbiter form. I, I don't know hybrid robotics. What, are you able to enter on the others? Because I have I have hundreds of entries on every one of these, so they're working. What do you think on the V Core Three? It's a nice printer. Um, I've seen them in person. It's very it's they their latest version. It's very aesthetic. I like it, uh, but I don't. I've never used one, so I don't know what gotchas or whatever. ES15 or ES126 for electronic screwdriver. I would go ES15. The ES-126 is a clone. Um, the ES-15 is the actual latest version. Way better you are channeling your inner Ivan. There we go. <laughs> I do not know Ivan Miranda. I'd love to meet Ivan Miranda. Absolutely would, would adore meeting Ivan Miranda. I, I, I kind of stopped watching when he took a musical detour. But he's back to his his core and I'm all over it. <laughs> you got it done for the orbiter. Awesome. OK. We have one minute left. We are not going to make any progress on here. So. 1259 right now, we have one minute left before I close the before I close the giveaway and we're going to give away some stuff. So thank you. Big, big thanks to LDO. Um, Jason at LDO for sponsoring the, the build, um, providing the kit and then providing a kit to give away and the and the orbiters and the parts that we've given away up to this point. And then big thanks to Polymaker for reaching out and um, allowing me to do the filament giveaways for for here and on. Joseph, did you build an ERCF? I did, and I did a build series on it last um, May-ish, April, April through June, around that time frame is when I built that. So I am going to turn off the submissions. So let, let me go through and turn all of these off. So that one is off, and that one is off, and then the kit is off. So. that the two meter cubed core XY is pretty, pretty ginormous. So I have turned them all off. Um, oh, I like I like James Britton as well. For sure. OK, let me get this set up. So where do we want to go? We are going to go here and here. So Giveaway time. We are going to start with the Polymaker filament. So let me get that, the results exported to a new spreadsheet. Let that load. How many people do we have here right now? Have we, no, nope. 565? Okay, 
Polymaker filament. Let me. Wow, the f I know the first person who entered. You were on it. It was a Keith. It was a first entry. Okay, copy that and paste it into here. And it always takes a little bit. If you want me to see a message at this point, we need, um, we need, um, you need to tag me. If you want me to see a message, highlight it with a tag, please. Okay, so this is the first roll. So let's go a number between four and 12 for shuffling it. A number between four and 12. There are always going to be more entries than viewers, um, but you have to be here and then you just have to go with it. <laughs> so number between four and 12. 42. Thanks, John. <laughs> Let's go with nine. Let's go with nine. One, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, and this is for a roll of Polymaker Filament. You get to go out to their website and pick what you want. There are some exemptions though. You are not gonna jump from there again. I'm gonna just bring you over here. <laughs> I'm not gonna go through that again. Beardface McGee, congratulations. You are the winner of one roll of Polymaker Filament. Let me let me bring up the timer. You have two minutes to be here. Tag me. Someone else. Let me know if they're here. Beardface McGee, two minutes. <laughs> Congratulations, Beardface McGee. Can't tag me if somebody else sees them chat, tag me. Say they're here. They're here. Where's the, where's, let's see him. He's here. Everybody's saying he's here. I'm here. There you are. Awesome. Congratulations, Beardface McGee. Let me, oops, shoot. What did I do? I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to move the OBS preview. Okay, let's grab this. Thank you, Charlie, for being in my way. And let me make sure I have an email address for you. Oh, there's there's Charlie doing his thing. I have your I have your email. Um, I'm going to fix lunch. <laughs> he already answered before I got the timer. OK, let me cancel that timer so we don't get our ears blown off. And so let's close that and clear the Clear this, and now we are going to draw for two um, LDO Orbiter kits. So let me export this. <laughs> Charlie is helping. Charlie is. I mean, he just settles right in. This is this is his happy spot lately. <laughs> So two LD LDO Orbiter kits. Um, I have one of these on Solid Fork. I have not done a lot of printing on the Solid Fork. There's some things I need to finish up on it. Um, I need to find a good... Um, why did that not export? Let's try this again. There we go. I need to find a good Wi-Fi solution for it or finally get the wired connection set up in my office here. Okay, coming down. This is Orbiter Extruders, two of them. I apologize, this takes me a little longer one-handed. Okay, pasting into the, pasting into the thing. Hmm. <laughs> 
I have I have lots of plans for setting things up in here. I just haven't done it. I just haven't done it. Okay, so we are going to draw the first one with a roll between five and ten. I'm just make them up, make them up as we go. Five and ten. Which what are how many are we shuffling? Five to ten, not forty two, John. <laughs> Two, three, nine. Well, nine works. <laughs> I, I was on a roll. The answer is always 42. This is true. This is true. Okay, I'm seeing lots of sixes. So let's go six. One, two, three, four, five, six. This is for the first winner of an LDO Orbiter kit. Doot, 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 doot. Who do we got? Robbery M. Robbery M. Tag me or say something in chat so somebody else will tag me. Congratulations. Robbery M. This is worldwide, just must be present to win. <laughs> Robbery M, are you here? I've started the timer. Two minutes. Congratulations. This is a good time for Charlie to want the snuggles. <laughs> Robbery M, tag me. Someone else tag me. No, don't be quiet. Keep the engagement up. It's okay. We'll, we'll, we'll work through it. <laughs> They're here. They posted. said yay. Awesome. I have enough people. Oh, there you are. I see ya. I see ya. Congratulations. Let me post this into here. Let me make sure I have a an email address for you. I have an email address that makes sense. Okay, let's remove ya, and then let's go a number between one and five. For number two. Orbiter extruder number two, one and five. <laughs> See, look how chill he is. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna go one. Shuffle and spin. Oh, shoot, I forgot to turn the, I forgot to turn the last timer off. Sorry about that. <laughs> Ines, Ines, how do you say that? Nice, are you here? Congratulations. Ines, Ines. <laughs> Ines. Does the orbiter come with the Charlie hair? I will not set the hands on it, so nope. <laughs> Are you here? It's gonna be, let's see. Oh, let me start the timer. You get a little extra time. <laughs> I forgot to start the timer. Are they taggable? Where are we at? Are they taggable? Gotta get the right the right special character. <laughs> this is the second orbiter extruder. Robbery, congratulations. Never won anything before, yay. You're welcome. I'm glad to be able to be the conduit for this, these giveaways, the, the facilitator. <laughs> Could not tag on the list. Doesn't mean they won't show up. We've had that happen. <laughs> I 
It's a Portuguese name? Awesome. We are at a little less than a minute. We're gonna get let it run through because we, we've had this happen just in the last couple of streams. And someone comes in right under the wire. <laughs> Nobody's seen it. I haven't seen it. We are at less than 30 seconds. They're making a sandwich. <laughs> they said I could. They said you could have a killer prince. Sold. <laughs> are we, yes, we are continuing to build after the giveaway. I do the giveaways at the three hour mark because I require people to be present and I don't want, given that, I don't want folks to um, feel like they have to just hang around for the end just because of that. I mean, this is supposed to be fun, right? This is this is for fun. So, Ennis, I am going to copy your name just for posterity, but I am sorry you have run out of time. Let's go ahead and close this. And I'm just gonna pick, we're gonna shuffle three times. One, two, three. And scroll. <laughs> I do not recommend. R3D Remy, I know you're here. Congratulations, R3D Remy. Let's tag me, let's make sure you are. But I saw you earlier. I saw you earlier. Congratulations. R3D Remy. Let's see, uh, you, even, even if I know you, you gotta be in chat. <laughs> Congratulations. Let's see ya. You gotta, you gotta speak up. There you are. I see ya. <laughs> See, that's the that's the benefit of of chatting is I, I I do notice. Let me let me put you down here. Oh, let me. Oh, I didn't start the didn't start the timer. Okay. Oh, that's the. <laughs> Congratulations. Close this. Okay. Here's the big one. Give me a minute. Give me a minute to set it up. Um, give me a minute to set it up. I need to grab the, the whole kit. Let's create that and create. And let's, while we're here, delete the last entries. Why does the case not match on, it's whatever you type. It doesn't, it doesn't, it, it's, it's typed. It doesn't actually detect it from YouTube. So. <sighs> Before this V0 is drawn, I get disconnected. I am here. <laughs> okay, is that created yet? What in the world? View it on, okay. We have YouTube display name. And scroll to the bottom. This is for an entire LDO Voron Zero S1 kit. Huge thanks to Jason and LDO for letting me let me do this build and letting me give this away. We have a lot of entries here, and I'm gonna have to. Try to balance Charlie while I select it all. Okay. This is going to take a while to paste. How many people do we have here? How many people do we have here just in time? We, 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 571, 578. It's pasting. So what's our range here? What's our range here? We got an S1, so we're gonna go from one to, what's today? One to 18. Today's my brother's birthday. One to 18. 
that's still pasting, so let's give it a minute. At least I hope it's still pasting. I hit the number. I hit the yep, there we go. Oh, we don't have we don't have YouTube chat on in this screen. I'm sorry, we haven't had YouTube chat on this screen the whole on any of the manual stuff. Oops. <laughs> okay, so LDO kit. One to eighteen. And see what people have been saying. I, I, I said one to eighteen. It is my brother's birthday today. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go all the way to eighteen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 16, 17, and 18. Are we ready? That's a lot of names. And scrolling! <laughs> it happens. It happens. The number of entries happens. Can't do anything about it. It is restricted. John MW, congratulations! Are you here? I am starting the timer. Come on. John MW. My brother is not 18. My brother is 43. <laughs> John M.W., are you here? Congratulations. Oh, there you are. Awesome. I see ya. Awesome. Congratulations, John. So for the winners, I will pass off emails to Jason and he will contact the LDO winners. For the Polymaker winner, I will send you an email with um, a form to fill out. So let me paste this over. Congratulations, John. Congratulations, the other winners. Let me, let me post this into here so I have the record and then make sure I have a good email address, or at least what appears to be a good email address. Yep, we are good. <laughs> okay, so let's close this and clear this out for the, for the rest. And I'm gonna set Charlie down because he has had an extended stay on my shoulder. He should not complain. Oh. <laughs> okay, we are back to the build. Congratulations, winners. Thank you to Polymaker and LDO. That's fun. I have a good time with that. OGK Kid, thank you. Will you be doing any more? I've never, I've never won anything. So we will be doing a Polymaker filament giveaway every stream um, until until I don't want to do it anymore. <laughs> or until Polymaker says, don't do it anymore. So it's very informal. So. Is there a Tridex kit? No, not yet. Now it's safe to go get food. We are going to be building for a while let, yet. Hmm. Oh, and now to speed build this printer. I think we're doing pretty good. We are doing pretty good. It is, it is taking a while, but unpin the links. Thank you. I appreciate that. And I'm actually, since, since we're here and you remind me, I am going to um, edit the description real quick to get rid of the the drawing thing. Let me edit this. Do, 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 do. Get these out. I appreciate the reminders. The description should be all saved and updated. We are, our goal is to get printing today. Uh, 
Our goal is to get printing today. Let me see something here. Sorry, I'm, I can only multitask so many, I can only do so many streams and <laughs> so many, my, so many <laughs> mental streams. <laughs> uh, have a current printer poll. Here, let's see. We want to do a poll. How do I do a poll? Um, engage with your audience. Start a poll. Do you currently have a working 3D printer? Ask your community. Let's find out. So suddenly more than 100 people disappeared. Oh, yeah. Always. Always. The, the graph does like this and then and then it levels out at a good number still. We're still at a good number. <laughs> OK, back to the build. Back to the build, back to the build. Okay, so we were working on this little cover that LDO has. And I want to see, I think this goes in here like this. And then this piece goes over here. And then it bolts to the back. I'm not sure what some of these... Oh, that might be a zip tie spot. Is that a so there's a there's a thing there. Is that a is that a little is that a little zip tie spot? Let's see. It is. It is. It's a little tight. I'd I'd open that up. I'd open that up if I was them. It's a little tight, but that is a zip tie spot. That's cool. What is the difference between the other V0.1 and the S1? The S1 just has some upgrades, has some um, some after aftermarket, so to speak, parts. Maybe those who hung around deserve something special. <laughs> if I had it for this number of people, I would. How many printers do we collectively own would show our addiction? What would be the categories? Okay, I need to put in a couple of, well, it looks like four of these post-install nuts in order to accommodate this little cover here. So let's do that. Any recommendations as I will be building my 2.4 in the near future now, what would you add to the LDO kit that you wish was on it and what parts could use improvement? I wouldn't change it. I mean, between between something like Clicky and and Stealth Burner, I I wouldn't I wouldn't worry about it. LDO's most rare kit is a Trident, only one made in collaboration, only one made in collaboration with Steve Builds Creator Trident with special modifications provided by by UPS, not FedEx. <laughs> you get filament, and you get filament. Okay, pre post install nuts. Let's get this get this moving. One, two. Oops. Three and one more. And then this one is going to go all the way over there. There and there. This one. somewhere 
over here. Okay. So these snap together there. I don't know if it broke or snapped. It seems to be holding. So now we can place this there, this there. And I think they did this in two parts so it could be printed on a V0, which is good and smart. Looks like there's a few more little slots in there for zip ties we'll play around with. Let's go with some M3 by eights. And maybe before we do that, it looks like there's some um, heat set insert holes for this. So where do those go? From the bottom, it looks like. So let's put some, put some heat sets in here. Okay, what am I missing in chat? You could show and explain the post install nuts. Never seen that before. I could. I, I I will explain that in more detail on another on another one. Then we we covered those um, in previous streams, but not everybody's here for every stream. I got to remember that. So. So these, this is one of the things that comes that came in this kit are these these little post install um, square nuts. And what's special about them is they are built, um, they have some big chamfers on the side that allow them to drop into these 1515 extrusions. Now, once they drop in, they're just flopping around in there. There's, there's a little, even a little extra play in there from a regular square nut because of those chamfers. So they designed a little tiny printed spacer that, that, you, that you pop in and then you saw me using pliers and what I'm doing is I'm moving that that square nut over on top of that printed spacer and that helps hold it in place. So. Do you have the fan saver user mod on my V0s? I have not. I haven't noticed any problem on my V0.2s with stealth burner though. Mini stealth burner. I did install it on one printer and it worked. I did install it on one printer way back and it worked. <sighs> Opinion on cheaper V0 kits, I Formbot or Fizetic. I'd, I'd choose Formbot over Fizetic. Are you coming to, I'm going to all the ERFs, all the RRFs. That's the plan is to go to all the RRFs. Oh, I got a bot. Wow. Let's hopefully I got the right the right person. Let's see. Did I get the right one? Yep, there we go. <laughs> working printer. 96% of people have a working printer. Okay, heat sets are there. M3 by 8, I'm sure for the rest of these. Oops, there's a, oops, let's go here. There's a screw that goes that way. So I forgot, I forgot that one. Let's see if I can take the opportunity to explain these post install nuts again. Let's go here and there we go. So these nuts, They do work, but do they print? <laughs> so this is actually a pretty good shot. See on this on this side here, there are these two edges here are, have a heavy chamfer on them. I know the focusing is not great, and I'm. But, so if you drop this in, see it drops through the through the. Um, through the extrusion there. If you tried to do that with a regular square nut, it's not a square nut. These are the thin, the thin square nuts that come with, um, that come with Prusa kits. That, that won't drop in there. I'm not gonna try hard because I don't want to scar my extrusion, but that won't drop in there. So, and then you saw how easy that one dropped in. 
um, and get this out. That, along with this little printed piece that has a, a heavy chamfer on this end, if you put that in with that chamfer in here towards the, and that drops in, put it in that towards the that that nut, that square nut, and then if you take tweezers or I'm using some pliers, and you can you can pull that you can pull that nut up on top of that printed part, and then squeeze it together, and now you've got a piece in there that kind of sticks sticks in place reasonably well. It's not perfect, but this is way better than any of the others. We need a Bay Area Rep Rap Festival. Yes. Barf. So did that help? That is the close up explanation on those, um, those post install nuts. Now I'm going to go in here, hopefully get all of these tightened down. Do you know if LDO would be selling those nuts on their own? I, I think they would be silly not to, but I'm, I'm guessing they will. I am would be pretty certain that they would. Take the Bart to barf, yes. Right. DFH has some? Cool. There we go. Now that's nice and sturdy there. Now we can get back to, so with this installed, we can get back to routing those wires because I needed to know where at the those end up going. Mm, was that right? So now we have all our wiring coming from the the bed. Those nuts will not work on maker beam. That's a good point. They, the profile of a maker beam extrusion mean those will not work. If you want the really Gucci maker beam option, then um, 713 maker, the machinist, aluminum machinist shop, um, make some hammerhead nuts that will work, but they are pricey. Okay, so we have all of those come through. Oh, they have us going up into the, that works. Okay. So they have us coming up into here and then we'll come out somewhere around here. So that just kind of gets those out of the way. And then we're gonna go up into this hole here. And here. Okay. Any recommendations on a solid fork kit? I don't know how many places are doing solid fork kits. I think KB3D and Fabrico are. I'm not going to recommend between those. I think you're going to have success at either one. Okay, then we have our main power. So this is our main power wire. And that is going to... That is going to plug into here. Where do they have us going? Do we have multiples of those? I think this is it. There's plus and minus. But what do we have? This is 24 volts in. This is to, to main PCB. 
Let me make sure I have all the right wires available to me. All the right wires available. Picobilical, picobilical wiring. Two umbilical, 24 volts in. Where do all of these go? Because they're not labeled very um, to main PCB. And this is 24 volts in. DFH and DLL PDF have solid four kits as well. Okay. There are good options out there. Yes. DFH has a solid. Okay. Yep. Why are there? So there's two UMB. Okay. So here's, oops, sorry. I should probably. So here, here it is. We have two UMB and main PCB. So we have main PCB here and two UMB here. So those just connect in between those two. I have a tabby that looks like Charlie. Yeah, tabbies from what I hear from a lot of people are, are just good cats in general. Okay, so let's go this one. Actually, let's go this one. This one, so the black wires to negative on both of those. And then the red wire to positive. Do, 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 do. Is the CW2 good enough or would an Orbiter V2 be a better extruder setup? I haven't used enough of the Orbiter V2. I hear very good things about it. I've used, had most experience with the CW2 and I like it. So, okay, so those go like that. I just noticed your lower panel has a fan mount cutout. I haven't seen that option before. So this is a um, LDO part for the, for the fan here. There is an extra fan they included that goes here that just helps add some airflow into the um, into the electronics area. So this is a printed part um, that is supplied in the printed parts guide from LDO. Basically, any you you know what that's a good point, Stephen B. Do your due diligence. But most places that are um, that are this early on a solid fork are probably enthusiast led. Do your due diligence still, though. Hi, James. Okay, where are we? So we have those two, those are routed up into there and the same as the others. So something like this. So these are gonna go up into here and then cut over into here and then down into this hole. Just like that. And that should complete our underside electronics wire routing. Time to shoot off, need to go get ready for work. Bye all, see ya Kyle. Catch up on the replay tomorrow, awesome. Once you're done, cover up the ducts. 
Now you have a completed the deck panel wiring. So if I grab my, the top of this ducting, where did I put that? Here it is. And if I mark this, I'm gonna cut this here, and then I'm gonna cut a 45 in the other side. I'm going to leave that nice side here. So then I'm just going to cut, clean this up a little bit, cut a 45 this way. This stuff can be pretty brittle. I mean, you could spend some time and sand it or whatever, but here we go. Now this side, so I'll clean this up. I just downloaded the fan panel for my current V0. Awesome. Then I'm probably gonna cut this probably about here with a 45 degree. Sway. There we go. Not bad. Is ducting really needed for so few wires? No, but it cleans it up. I'm not complaining. We've got enough just for one down the middle of the back, I think. It's the next thing. Is there a one gigabyte Pi 4? I don't know, I think two gigabytes is the smallest, or did they make a one gigabyte? Okay. Wiring the back panel. So we're gonna prepare the SKR Pico. Let's get the printer turned over and set aside. This can go right here. Okay, we have stuff. We have an SKR Pico. This came with a Raspberry Pi 02W. That, that, that's not gonna be just like any, any other LDO kits. They're, um, at best optional um, for the Pi, but this, this they supplied a, a 02W with this. My last month probably got no printers left after trying to survive this Christmas. Just sold a 2.4, a Trident V0, all these parts and even an X-Beam and all that good stuff. Is that an ant? Yes, I have ants in here. It's, the rain brings them in. I have no food anywhere close to here, but the ants find, they wander. So one of the pre-stream preps I did is I loaded the Pi OS and main sale and updated Clipper. You've seen me do that a dozen times. Um, going through the OS updates and stuff takes a significant amount of time. So I use the Pi Imager and I, I loaded the main sail um, image on there. So that is done. But the full firmware, all that on the on the Pico and the Pico Bilical, that we're going to have to do on stream. You know, I've not, you've never seen me done it and I actually haven't done it on a Pico yet at all. I'm gonna put this little copper heat sink on the on the pie. All right there. Yeah, zero two W is a fine raspberry. The problem is it doesn't have enough uh, USB ports for a lot of applications.
See you, OGK kid. So, there is a, supplied in this, with this, is a little USB breakout board that the Zero plugs onto and it connects to the, to the Zero with these little pogo pins. So, this whole thing will go on, we, we will look at the instructions. So, we have that and that. <laughs> Pi Zero 2W is more or less a Pi 3, correct, in a smaller form factor. And this is a mini USB hub that is made for the Zero. And I think that plugs in, yeah, it's got to plug in there because it, it touches, those pogo pins touch these little pads on the bottom of the, of here. So that's going to go right like that. Now, I think I can just do it. Yeah. Any other mounts are going to be... There's a printed mount for this. We'll see how that goes from the instructions. Do you have any interest in the K3 or VZBot printers? I definitely have an interest in the VZBot printers. Um, sadly, the 02W came out during the shortages, so it's never been really available. Yeah, I got a couple of them early on. You can use a USB hat for the 02W. I do this in the trident. Yep. There's a cool, um, I don't remember who makes it, but there's a cool... Um, similar setup to this, and even a little more compact, you can get on Amazon that works pretty well. Oh, do, 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 do. This is, L I think this is made by LDO, this little hub. Although it doesn't have any LDO branding, so they may have just sourced it somewhere. Preparing the Pico. So we're going to add the Pico to this mount. So the Pico uses the same the same mounting pattern as a regular Pi. So. Actually, I'm back. I'll listen on my thumb. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so that's Gara Pico. It uses the Raspberry Pico RP2040 uh, MCU. See the little raspberry logo there. This is going to go like this. And I'm going to use some M2 self tappers. So hold it on. Why not UART? UART is a very valid way to connect this. I'm going to cover the the kit recommendations but i may change it to your later if you get usb issues with one of those pogo pin hubs clean those contacts well then reinstall yeah i'm gonna do some ipa cleaning on them before i put it together too just to Had to go fix a little one's toy, so I may have missed it. Have to, I have to source a Pi Zero. I can't use a Pi 4. You can use a Pi 4. There's no reason not to use a Pi 4 in this. It's about the same spacing, space taken up, as that hub and, and Pi Zero. Is it just me that thinks BTT missed a trick by not making the Pico stackable with the Pi? It's not stackable? I thought it was. Mouse are accepting orders for Raspberry Pi back ordered though. Okay. I wonder how long it'll take. They've I saw that report of a bunch of them being injected, but that's still a pretty small um, amount for the demand. You need a mounting bracket for MCU's own USB hub. <laughs> yes. Pi said next year the supply should be better. We will see, that's for sure. Preparing the Raspberry Pi. If your kit includes a Raspberry Pi Zero 2W, it will come with a USB expander PCB. Print this mount. Designed specifically for the USB expander, there are two holes which accept in 2x10 self-tapping screws and two others that are screwed in using the brass standoffs. Remove the nuts underneath. What are we talking about? Remove the... Oh, I see. Okay, so there is... These two have nuts here, and I think we need to remove those those nuts 
which my little, those are an M5, should be a, nope, nope, they're smaller than that. Um, I don't have something that'll do that. So I guess I'll use my pliers here very carefully. There we go. Nope. Um, do I have anything that'll do that? Oh, maybe I do. Maybe I do. I, I all, almost forgot. Where's my, ah, I fix a kit. Let's see here. Five millimeter? Yep, awesome. I fix it kit to the rescue. So that's there. And what do we do here? Do we, let's take that off and let's take this one off. The Nipex would have been a, a good choice too. So that should thread, I guess, thread back into the plastic. Very few threads there, so that's a, be very careful with the, with your ugga duggas. Thread that in only to, to touching and it'll be strong enough, just like that. And then a couple of self tappers on the other side. The Nipex would have been a good idea, but I have this cool little iFixit kit. There. And here. Gotta watch the Ugga Duggas, yep. Okay, so that's on there. And then it came with some, some screws here that I think are to screw this. So first, I'm gonna grab some Q-tip. And I'm going to just make sure that my greasy fingers didn't get any anything on any of these contacts below. Now I know there's only a few that are used, but I'm not gonna go looking for which one, so I'll just clean the whole bottom side. Clean that, and then I'm just gonna carefully just grab the top of these, because I know I push those down, just like that. And then this can go on here. Now, what are the fasteners here? And check out the King Room KP3S on their site for 150 bucks. That's a good price. Now, I am not actually going to use the motorized side of this, but I already had a two millimeter in here. <laughs> Ooh. Those are touching. And there's an extra screw even, that's good. Okay, so if you can see those pogo pins there, touch pads on the underside of the pie, then you end up with this neat little setup. Then I have this little piece. Oh, there's a there's a slit already in there. So this is a little breakout board that LDO has. It goes on the goes to the end pins here and plugs in. And what this does is gives pi pi power here. And then what is that? I don't know what that is. Does it say on the? It doesn't say on the bottom what it is. I'm not sure what that is. Maybe the documentation says somewhere. But there's pi power in and then ADXL, a connector for the ADXL ribbon um, there. So. 
Oh, let me get some water. Let me get some water. And I'm a little, I keep forgetting. That. There we go. Okay. Back to here, preparing the Pico Bilical. So I don't know what that three pin JST connector is. Maybe we'll find out. The Pico Bilical frame PCB has an RP2040 microcontroller that should be pre flashed with Clipper firmware. It should be pre flashed. Okay. So let's look at this. So the Pico Bilical, we keep talking about it. It came in the, in the prizes in the first two uh, strings in the series. Um, it is a additional MCU here that bolts into that spot between the, the A and B steppers that has a Pico RP2040 processor and just gives the tool head, all the tool head functions. So. I will <laughs> got to take Doggo for a walk. First bit of sun for a week. Have fun. DFH has the post install M3 nuts you're using. Awesome. So everybody can go. What is it? Deep fried hero dot in or have they changed the website? Anyway, so this is going to get main power from the 24 volt power supply. And then there's a five volt out that has the proper power requirements for a Pi. And this actually powers the Pi, which is kind of clever. And then there is a companion tool head board that goes with this. And the cool additional thing about this, besides the breakout, is it has the ADXL um, sensor built in. So you take a little ribbon cable from there when you're running it. So, and then there is a, wherever it went, a little pigtail that goes between the tool head and that board. It's dfh.fm now. Okay, but the other one redirects. Okay, thank you. Okay, and then there's additional hardware here and wiring and USB cables and stuff. So there's a little FFC cable for the CR3D rem Remy. So little cable for the ADXL, USB-C cable, and then some power. And it does do um, stepper pass through. It doesn't have a 2209 on there. It uses it from the from the main controller. Okay, preparing. So the Pico Bilical, if your Pico Bilical was not flashed or needs to be reflashed with new firmware, click here, check here. And there's some instructions there and we're gonna wanna flash this to the latest version. But we're gonna place things. So these things are gonna go in this orientation in X millimeters. I don't know what X millimeters is, but it's gotta be X millimeters in all those directions. X doesn't look to equal X or X or X, though. <laughs> OK, so X doesn't equal X or X or X. So we'll figure out what we need to do. <laughs> Some of this documentation is in progress, but we can eyeball it. We can figure it out. It'll be close enough. Okay, just putting that away. Where do we want to tackle this next? I wonder if we should. <sighs> 
It's all for X, yep. Find X, it's there. Get stuff cleaned up here. How do I want to tackle this as far as, do I want to put everything in the, in the printer or do I want to flash things out of the printer? I guess I'll put everything in the printer and then we'll figure it out. So placement, let's get things placed. a bunch of bunch of wires and cat hair and everything but we are going to have a thing going there and a thing going there and a thing going there so how long do I want this first thing to be it's gonna center here it looks like it doesn't need to be this long so I'm gonna clean up the ends. <sighs> Leave that there, and then how long do I want this to be? That's gonna go about, it looks like about that far from the top, according to the picture here. And then probably a little bit up from the bottom, so. Do something like maybe right there. Okay, so we'll do something like something like that. I think will work. Might have cut it a little short, but that's okay. I'm eyeballing things. Where did I put the, the tape? The VHB tape. There it is. <sighs> Clean this off with the... Never cheap out on a PSU. I have it on, on good authority, not from LDO. Not saying that they're not a good authority, but a, a, an independent opinion that the this power supply is known and is a good brand. Uh, Morn Sun. So I don't have any worries about it. What thickness? This is all one millimeter VHB. It's just the standard stuff that comes in any of the kits. And I'm just putting a few pieces on there. It doesn't have to be the full length. It doesn't even need to be as much as this. What time is it? Two o'clock. We're at four hours. Do you think we're... We're two hours from finishing this build. How are we doing on my, are you, can you still hear me? Oh, we're close. We're close to having to do a temporary switch on the, on the microphone. About there to about there. Again, I buy Mac Minis for all my Clipper builds. Are Mac Minis that cheap? Okay, now we're going to put a couple of pieces of VHB on the back of here for holding the, the pie in place. I'm going to do a little bit of cleaning. Okay. 
that one, and where's the, uh, that one. I'm almost done. Well, there's a, there's a good while, but we are working towards it. Okay, so we appear to be, if we look at, if we look at like this hole here as a reference, these two holes, it looks like I'm lined up with the corner of this hole in the panel. And then for this one, we're lined up just above this, this screw. So that's what we're going to go by on attaching these. Okay, so this is going to go. And I'm going to have to get in, get my head in the way. That's going to go right there. And then this one. gonna go well time to go to bed here in Denmark see ya Michael you know I've noticed at least the people that win have been sticking around. Okay, so this one is gonna go, get this out of the way, lined up right north of this, of this screw in the corner. Yeah, right here. Right there. Okay. Awesome. Clean up some of my trash here. Boydie, of course you're still here. <laughs> Even those who didn't win are sticking around. Of course, I didn't mean that way. What I meant is, for the most, like, when we did the Trident giveaways, the folks that won those were around for streams later. It's not just, it's nice to see. It's just nice to see. <laughs> I didn't mean anything against people that didn't win. <laughs> okay. SKR Pico <clears throat> connections. In this step, we'll start hooking up connections to the SKR Pico. We'll start, start by connecting the cables that were previously routed from the bottom. Check the port diagram of the Pico here. So let's go open in a new tab. This is the SKR Pico port diagram. We may refer back to it. Okay. Um, so we have 24 volt in. This is a long cable. We may be routing this around. So we're gonna go power first, I guess. This is to 24 volt in, and this one is, this one's got a, wow, those are really long. No, no, remember for five months, <laughs> just because of giveaways. <laughs> These are some really long cables. They do not need to be this long. I might do some under deck using, moving some wires around. I might do that. Considering live streaming my builds for the fun of it, how can I get started? Get a spot you can work up and point a camera at it. <laughs> That's how I did it. <laughs> I bought a GoPro and went from there. 
Okay, so the the power inlet on the Pico is this one on the end. So this is so this is power. This is the heated bed. This is the hot end. And then this is for a laser. <laughs> hey Jason. Pico Bilical will stay there even. Yes. And it should, everything will be compatible. So I'm gonna pull this wire back out through here and I'm going to take this through this and then flip it around. And which one is, uh, okay. I have another Raspberry Pi Pico around here. It is not labeled on the top, which is, which is frustrating and annoying. Maybe their documentation shows it well enough. Put a big service loop just to get up and running. Oh yeah, I'm putting big service loops in this for sure. Let's look at this and see if it says, okay, there is a pretty good indication here. This one is um, positive on the outside. Okay. Pico Bilical is LDO's Raspberry Pi Pico based tool head board made specifically for the Voron Zero. Okay, we are going to loosen these. And according to their documentation, we will get these hooked up the right way. That one. And that one. Push those in and tighten them down. We consider other fruit pie, but none of them as stable as raspberry pie. When you use one or two pieces, all good. When you use a thousand, yeah. Hi, Joker Nut. Okay, so that I'm I'm looping, and then I'm gonna. Underneath here, I'm going to do a service loop across the, all the sp extra space I have in these raceways down here. So that's how I'm going to deal with that. That's going to go there. And I'm going to do the same for the for the power for the Pico Bilical. That's going to go up here, but it doesn't need to be nearly that long. So I'll, I'll use up the, the bit down here on, underneath the deck. Just pulled a new one positive on the far outside. Yep. And that's what their picture says, so that's good. And then we have the bed thermistor and the bed RGB. So this is the bed thermistor, and we have a, we gotta grab our connector here. So this is not polarized, so we can just plug this in and then find the spot on the board. And then this plugs in, says, bed thermistor is up here. Thermistor bed, it says TB. It's on the side right up here in the top. And then we will probably do our service loop in this chain right here. We'll take everything and just tuck that inside there. There we go. And then that's nice and tight through there. And then our bed RGB is this, and we've got another connector around here somewhere. That is the... We got one in here. Three pin connector. How many wires in the Pico Bilical Umbilical Cable? I think it's the full 14. Yeah, all 14 are populated. Okay, if we look at the RGB connector, which is the second one up, and we look at the pin out, RGB is ground, signal and five volts. So if I 
kind of visualize this, take my connectors and ground is the one on the end. So this one is ground. Signal is the one with the white insulation. And five volts is the one with the red insulation. And then that's gonna plug in right there. And same thing, I will probably take my little service loop just in this, this cable chain here, at least for now. If I feel like I have to change that, I will. I'll go right there. Do you flash the beat? I have not. I have not. I'm going to have fun with that if it's a problem, but we shall see. <laughs> Okay. Hey, Dark Neutrino. It's time for me to make like Charlie and sleep. Have a good rest of the build. Thanks, Derek. Have a good, have a good night. So there's like three 2040s in this build. Where's the, there's two, All right? There's two 2040s. Does the Pico Bilical use the same flash image as the SKR Pico, or does it use different configuration? It's the same firmware image, I think. We'll go through the instructions, though. Okay, back to here. We have bed thermistor, RGB, bed heater. Now, does that one? That one doesn't matter. So we are going to probably pull these out. Do the same up into here, and then there, I've got a difference in there. Oops. I'll pull the there. So bed heater is this one. Let me confirm with the bed heater. Yep. Gabriel, got to go to bed. Thanks for the stream so far. I'll finish the rest tomorrow. Awesome. Good night. I know it gets late for, for many parts of the world. Bed heater. go and then this is gonna go similar up into there just like that so that's all the bed stuff is now in and contained well sort of there we go the results should look like this um close enough and this stuff, we will connect the stepper motors and end stops to the SKR Pico. So B stepper goes, let's see if I can, can I sneak this underneath? I wanna see. I'm not showing, well, not that you can see anything. <laughs> I'm just trying to be clever here. Let me see if I can get a... There we go. So if I can do that, then I can take this over into here, just straight across into there, and then straight under here. And this one plugs into... The, the B stepper plugs into X which is the second one. Right like that. And that's nice and nice and clean. Keeps the wire from dangling out over here. 2040s on the Pico. No, the Raspberry Pi is not a 2040. The Pi Zero is not a 2040. Killer Prince. 
Maybe Steve should do an unannounced giveaway near the end of the stream. <laughs> One day, maybe. Gots to go. Thanks, Steve Bill. Enjoy your holiday. See you next year. See you, Richard. Okay, so that worked out pretty well. Let's see if we can do we can do similar with this one. This one's gonna go in right here, so. This is gonna go into the Y stepper. Pull this out here. That one plugs in right there. I'll just send this through the same right next to that. It can go in right like that. And then those are nice and nice and tucked out of the way. And then the Y end stop and the Z end stops. So Z end stop is going to go in here and we've got a connector to put on here. So the end stop pins, there's the end stop right there. Oh, and they're labeled, so that's good. Which pins based on the diagram? So we have signal and ground. So we plug this in. Signal is the outer one. So this is, this is like this. Ground is the middle. Ground is the middle. Signal is the, the left one. Okay. And this is the Z end stop. It's going to go down here and go in here and plug into the Z end stop, just like that. Right there. And then the Y end stop is already plugged in. And the Y end stop is this one right here. So that's going to go. I don't know how much room that needs. So we're just going to do, do something like that. What is a wider supply chain trial? Everyone's supply chain issues this year. Yeah, I'd I'd like to buy I'd like to buy a vehicle, but supply chain issues are in in the way of that. <laughs> oh, a stepper, b stepper, z stepper. We need to get the z stepper. So it's got its own. There's e stepper. Where's the z stepper wire? It's got to be, oh, it's one of these. We're going to have lots of, lots of wire to get out of the way. I think this is it. That's, that's extruder. Yeah, this must be it. This guy. So let's go here. I haven't been able to get the serial interface on the MCU working with either USB or UART on a Pi 4B adapter. Okay, and then this is going to go into the Z stepper. I'm going to do the same thing, try to sneak this underneath just because that was fun to do. My definition of fun may not equal your definition of fun. stepper plugs in right there. And this is going to go in here. I need to send it down through this hole. I think I'm going to use up the, the excess down here underneath. So I'm going to leave that right there. Okay. Bought it in Mark 8 GTI in June. I'm looking for something I can carry stuff in, though. Market GTI is nice as a hatch, but. OK, Z stepper, B stepper, A stepper, Y and Z end stops are all plugged in. 
Now we're gonna install the Pico Bilical. So in this step, we'll install and connect the Pico Bilical. We're gonna install the power cords first. So there is a main power, which is this guy. Four volts on that side. Are you going to shorten or just fold all those wires? I'm just going to fold all those wires. I will not have an opportunity to finish this build today if I try to go through and shorten wires. And plus, the whole point is feedback on this on this kit. So this is going to go in here like this. So let's just set that right there. See you, Jack Black. Can head PCBs are awesome, but I hold my question about the temperature of the inboard driver. Now, there was some talk about the Mellow SB2040 temperature being really high on the um, for the SB2040, the, the RP2040 on there. Mine was reporting 80C. I could touch it and hold my finger on it. It wasn't at 80C. So there's something else going on with those. Okay, the Pico Bilical does power the, um, the Raspberry Pi. So this little jumper is power to the Pi. So five volts and ground here. Oops, let's open this up all the way. Making sure we get these polarities all correct. And then this is going to plug in right here. Yeah, I, I was noticing and really concerned about the temperature of that. I look, the, the max temperature they rate the um they rate the rp2040 at is 85 c i think it is and i was hitting 80 i was concerned so i i touched it though and it's nowhere near that How is that board mounted? It looks loose still. There are two um, screws here that I'm just I'm just wiring things up right now. So I am going to go through the end here. Maybe I can sneak in here as well. This is the so it's just a, a jumper basically for the for the extruder. Um, it uses the driver on the on the Pico here, just like that. <clears throat> okay, so then that's going to go there, and we'll tuck that up when it's when it's ready, when we're at that point. All these are, are holding in. That's the e-stepper. Cables are pre-installed. Don't forget to print and install a PCB cover plate. Route the cables according to the diagram below. We are good. So there is a cover plate and that's, that's this guy. So this is going to go on here, and then all of this is going to go in here. And I think, uh, is it an eight millimeter or a 10 millimeter I'm going to need for these? 
an eight millimeter will work. So I can pre-install one of these because they're slotted. Now there are some jumpers here, so we should check. Um, there are some jumpers here for hot end fan and uh, part cooling fan voltages. Now, what voltage was the... Let's look at the Pico Bilical documentation here. I'm, I don't remember what voltage the, the part cooling fans were. I know the, the hot end fan is five volts. So I am on the Pico Bilical documentation page here and I'm hoping it tells me what what to set these to okay I'm gonna oh I know um, let's go to the is there a bomb I gotta I gotta print it out bomb I've got to print it out um, um, let's see if it says, <clears throat> let's see if it says what volt, fan voltage came with the kit. The 24 volt blower fans, 24 volt blow, blower fans. And it says five volt axial fan, the 3006 is five volt and the 3010 is 24 volts. <clears throat> so we are, it is set properly for, for what it should be. <clears throat> so that's what these, these jumpers here are for. One of them set to five volts and it's labeled hot end fan, five volts and part cooling fan is set to 24 volts. The rest of it should be okay. So we can get this in here and put it there and there. Sneak in here with a screw, bolt that in. And then over here, hold this one in. Now I'm, I'm gonna line up this printed part with the with the edge of the PCB on this slot and then tighten it down. There we go. So now that's in there. This is going to just sneak around here and plug into the pie. Will that little hat board work for providing on a normal size pie, do you think? And will be supplied in a no pie kit. These little these little boards, I think, come in all of the the recent um, LDO kits, not just this one. I've had this come in the in the Trident kits. Now those are a little long. They're sticking out. They could be cut down a little bit, but I'm not I'm not going to go with through that right now. Okay, so that's there. This is here flipped around and that's good right there that's there that's there are we good we have some usb to do <sighs> okay so let's go back to the wiring guide and i gotta scroll back down to where i was CV placement and figure out where we were. So 24 volts in, we've got results will look like this. And then we have USB cables. So we've got a PCB fan that goes to two connections. Well, no, that's this one will get installed in one spot. Um, so there's a USB that goes there and a USB that goes there. I 
got one here, and where's the other one? One here. Okay. We have got a lot of cable for this one, less cable for that one. Let's go here. And that can sneak into the, the wire race there. We've got a lot of extra here. I don't know what to do with that. I don't know if I want to bend it that tight. It's quite long. This one isn't as long. Do I have any other cables that came in the kit? No, that's that's all of them. So we'll we'll make it work. Let's do this just for <laughs> take a little take a little trip around the around the the pie mount. Nothing's pulling on anything. We're good. And then we have this one will go into the eco here. Go across the bottom. And the same thing. We've got we've got more than we need here. So we'll just do a little a little loop. Plug that one in. The USB cables are not pretty right now. <laughs> I don't know what exactly I would do to help that. Run UART maybe. Oh, that what might be what these con this connector is. This connector might be for UART. It's three pins, and you only need two. But the problem with looping inside the raceway is I'd have to bend those USB cables at a pretty sharp bend to get it inside of here. I don't want to do that. I'll clean this up, but we need to we need to make it work. It doesn't look ugly because you're not going to see it, but it could be better. I agree. It could be better. Um, that's there. I think all of that is done. So let's let's flip it up on its top before we finalize this. Shorten the USB cable, yep. We're gonna pop these off. And then we're gonna grab these and we are going to pull those in like that same thing here just pull those in into this spot and the same thing with the the stepper wire here stepper cable here which we have a ton of extra cable for Let's take this one all the way over there. And just do like that. There we go. Just like that. Okay, messy and not good for functional parts. It's not terrible. It's really not. My head's bugging me. You know what I'm gonna do? Oh, I'm gonna have a granola bar. 
because we are at almost the five hour mark and I'm surprised you guys can still hear me because my battery is close. Now hmm. Warren came out with a resin printer build. So we, we ended up at 94%. How many votes did we get here? 477 votes. Do you currently have a working 3D printer? 94% of you do. Awesome. <laughs> I'm guessing you can power and communicate with the Pi using the port next to the fans on the Pico. And use USB to connect to the Pico Bilical if you didn't have the USB expander. Coffee? I finished my coffee. I have water. I need water. <laughs> There's still almost 300 people in here. That's good. Should we pull how many people are using bed slingers versus Core XY? I have a bed slinger. <laughs> Age of the viewers I get in YouTube stats. On average, you're about my age. <laughs> That's funny. When I looked at it, it said yes, 94% and no, 6% until I ended it. That's YouTube math. We should know that YouTube math doesn't add up. <laughs> okay. Food. So, we got a USB done. It all should look like this. Finish line. Insert the umbilical cable from the tool head. And now you are done, but we're not done. Let's go to the Pico umbilical instructions. We are an old bunch. So there's a tool head piece of this. A tool head PCB piece of this. Okay, there's no instructions on it. Perfect, we got this. We have a tool head PCB that is going to go on the back of here. And now there are some printed parts here that I printed. I'm not entirely sure how this is supposed to work. I suspect this goes on here like this and the the intent here is they want to um, angle the PCB back away from the, the tool head. So we're going to, we are going to um, go with that and see how this, how this part fits. This part is close to fitting. There is It's not a perfect fit, but it is close. It can be, it squeezes into place. This part could use some work, David. This part could use some work. Maybe my print, maybe my print settings could use some work. I won't, I won't rule that out. I'm going to do a little bit of just making sure we're good here. This is printed at an angle. Let's go with that.
This is more moving weight on the head. Yeah, it's a it's a tiny printed part and they included it, so I want to try it. I think we've got these two uh, these two pieces here that are kind of giving us trouble. So I'm just gonna cut those a little short and I'm actually gonna reflow them because there's a little little more solder on there than I would than I would normally want. So more solder than than is needed anyway. And I think they're getting in the way of it sitting flush. This is not a 2040. This is just a breakout board, but it happens to have the ADXL um, chip on there so it can do input shaping from this spot. Now I'm just gonna take this and just do a, a reflow on, on this just to reduce the overall size of that. There, that was it. See if it fits on here a little better now. Still not perfect, but here's what I'll do. Modify that and modify. Modify that just a little bit. We'll go with that. Okay. So there were some machined standoffs. So these guys go on here, which is kind of nice. These little, the little printed standoffs, whether you like them or not, were one of my contributions to V0.1. The whole little strain relief setup that came out on this. So whether you love them or hate them, you can blame me. <laughs> and then is this a eight, probably a 10 or 12 millimeter screw to hold these on? Come on, come out. There we go. Probably a 12. Okay. So there's no options on here to set. There was little companion printed parts to, because this, this PCB is set in an angle, you need to have the corresponding angle on this spacer. Otherwise you're gonna be tightening down. It's not gonna tighten down right. I'm gonna take this and run a. Oh, almost lost it. Run a reamer. I hate them. Thank you for making my life life worse. Perfect. This is really tiny to be to be trying to ream. There we go. <laughs> Seen the streams, I'm gonna to have to watch it again. ERCF was a fun build. It was a good lesson. It was really a good lesson in how much paying attention to details can pay off in a in a in a build. Okay, so now this can go in there. And then this goes in here. And that can tighten down onto there. So I have a little interference here. So let's see if we can see that. The screw head 
for the XN stop is is interfering right there. So I just took a little little nibble out of that, I'm hoping, with the knife. So yeah. So now I'm gonna take this and I'm just gonna carve. I'm gonna carve a little little notch out of there to hopefully just avoid that, that screw. Yep, just like that. A long stream, yes. I made a jig to hold them when inserting the heat set so they don't just expand out. That's a good idea. What are people going to get the extrusions for their top hats? I have a LDO green frame I'm going to match. That's a good question. Okay. Now I think I can put the rest of this on. Little massaging of the part. There. go okay that's on there don't I have a pen grinder I do not I probably should now I can't see anything for what um, what thing is what yeah I can now I can so X and stop goes here that's just gonna bend over to the side there Yeah, a button head might have fit. There are some, uh, well, there, it would be called a pan head, right? The Phillips style. The Phillips style would be what they call, they call that a pan head. It's a little lower profile, but not a whole lot. Okay, I'm noticing I put my um, Revo to the wrong side. So I'm gonna see if I can fix that without pulling things apart. I'm going to try pulling this down and flipping it around. And it looks like I'm going to be successful. There we go. And that's going to go up, up on this side that has all the cables, apparently. There. That's going to go right there. Let's see what kind of... Let's see if I can get a... I'm trying to get a better view for you. Hot end fan goes there, part cooling fan, part cooling fan. So hot end fan goes here. And then, can you still hear me? Holy moly, that's still running. Heater. These are these are on the edge of too big for these terminals. They are a 
little too big. So what I'm going to do is pre-crush these a little bit. Just take my pliers and crush it just a little bit. There, see? That goes there. That one. Goes up in there. Sent you a pen grinder recommendation on Discord. Awesome, thank you. There. And then this is going to get bent kind of tight. As long as we don't interfere over here, we're okay. This one's gonna get a part cooling fan right here. And we wanna make sure we don't get in the way of the X end stop there. Then this part cooling fan goes here. And I think this is the thermistor. Okay, so that is everything plugged in. It's not pretty. We will make it slightly more pretty. The thing that's going to be a bear to plug in is the... And we're just gonna, I'm gonna cut this a little long and just deal with it later. But we need to um, crimp on a, we need to crimp on a new connector onto here. Okay, four terminals, I'll often cut off the last, yes. Cutting off the last little bit is a good idea. It'll insert further and, and be a little lower profile. Oh, is Eddie here? Did we, did I miss Eddie? <laughs> Swap part cooling plugs, we'll lose some cable. Yeah, that's a good idea. That is a good idea. All right, now what I need to do is take, uh, I guess I'll go this angle. I need to crimp a, crimp a connector on here. We have terminals. I don't know what those are for. Here they are. Here's some JST. JST terminals. Oh, you were just talking about IDEX. Yep, we will start that back up on, on New Year's Day. Okay, so blue, red, green, black. The blue here. ain't easy, unless it is. Okay, then there is a included new four pin JST.
Okay, make sure we are good. Too late what? Did I miss something? I wore that shirt today, it was a big hit. <laughs> Did I miss the crimper story? Um, we have not we have not gone into the full crimper story. Um, I will be going into the full crimper story another stream. Okay, I am going to take the advice and flip these to the other sides. Use up some of this wiring. For the park cooling fans. Okay, and then, so I am in get this done mode. So we are going to zip tie some things and not worry about some other things. <laughs> okay, I'm trying to get, okay, zip, zip tie. The one wire that comes out this side. There we go. And that, that makes sure that it doesn't get in the way of the, the XN stop. And the other side is getting all the rest of the wires. Where's my zip ties go? Where did the zip ties go? Oh, here they are. Would be nice if the crimping discussion would be titled on this, on the stream, stream top. We will talk about that probably on New Year's Day. These zip tie holes are really, really hard to reach. Especially with these other wires in the way. There we go. I like crimping. Okay, let's let's bend a service loop into here to get that heater wire contained. And then we will probably do a similar bit of there we go, right there. And that, it's an interesting technique. Never thought about crushing those. Are you a little behind, Hoodwinked? You might not be live. You sound like you're about 20 minutes behind. That's okay. Okay, so this is, this is kind of a semi-managed haircut back there. <laughs> Then this guy just plugs in there and there. Awesome. Now, what we should be doing is disconnecting, for now, the easy end side, one side of this, um, the heater. So I'm going to leave this unplugged for right now. We have not powered this whole thing on. If this is unplugged, if for some reason the heaters are on on power up, we're not going to have a problem. 
Same thing with the bed. I'm gonna go under here and disconnect one side of the bed heater. The things that can start a fire, I'm disconnecting. There. Now we're gonna get into burning, turning things on and burning firmware and stuff like that. So, as a normal process, safety process, I wanna start remembering to do that. First power up shouldn't have any heaters plugged in. So heaters unplugged, but temperature, temperature sensors plugged in. Do a YouTube short how to crimp. I could do that. <clears throat> Hey, no deer. Uh. Okay, did I miss any questions? How's the Tridex going, Steve? I have spent the last two days printing an army of Maui statues trying to get the two colors calibrated. I we, will continue the build on that New Year's Day. What is the green board there? This is a USB hub basically for the Pi Zero. Okay, are we ready? Do we have a good um, smoke show view here? We're gonna power it on. <sighs> the New Year's Tridex stream, yep. We will make progress on New Year's Day and probably another two streams after that as I'm, gu I'm guessing. Okay, we are going to power this on. Okay, you can probably hear me. Let me know if this is too loud. Let's try this. How is that? <sighs> I missed the Santa RCF. So I knew that was going to die. Um, the, because I forgot to charge it. I'm amazed that it lasted five hours. Because it wasn't, it was probably at 70 or 80% charge. <laughs> so I am on an external microphone now. My lav mic is not um, the thing that's that you're hearing. Um, I suspect I'm going to need a couple of things here. Me. Sounds good. Good enough. OK, this is my backup. It's just a little. Um, That's my backup. <laughs> Normally it's this guy and now it's that guy. <laughs> so I got all the fans plugged in. Don't forget to charge it now. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to take this. Actually, I'll leave that there. 
I'll take this over here and plug it in. And then, let's see. Let's plug this in. We'll give it a little bit of a charge and see if we end up going back. It's more ambient, but it's good. Okay. We are ready to turn this on. So let's go to power. Ready? Please don't blow up. I got a green light there and I got a red light here. Charlie is... He's... he's He's an old man waking up right now. Let's see. He's an old man waking up right now. Okay. This is the point. This is the point where <laughs> that look. <laughs> it's not a it's not a road mic. It's a generic thing off of Amazon. Um, this is the point where I'm glad I spent some time yesterday pre-flashing this. So let's go through and get going. Let's let's get this thing flashed. So um, we are V0 gray at local. Charlie is booting up. <laughs> so this is... This is it. Nothing is set up. It's just been updated. So the all the all the things have already been updated. I did this. So our normal normal process. Charlie's booting up. <laughs> um, this this is the stuff that usually takes us half an hour or more more to do. And 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 you know, to, you you've been here before. Many of you have been here before. This worked the first time. It never works the first time on stream, so doing it off stream, it worked the first time. <laughs> the first thing we are going to flash, let's just go ahead and flash the Pico Bilical. Yeah, it did work the first time. It was amazing. <laughs> I, I, I put my Wi-Fi password in correctly the first time. So let's find out if this is showing up because they say there's already a there's already firmware on it. So let's go. Let's go here and let me grab the text window and let's SSH B0 oops B0 gray dot local. Yes. And log in. I'm not behind. I actually posted that right as he was doing it. No, oh, interesting. It just took a bit. That's password for the sex Wi-Fi is critical. Yes. Um. Now we are going to let's just see what might be showing up. Dev slash serial slash by dash ID slash star. Hey, we are getting. Which one is that? That's the question. It's got to be. This has got to be because the, the SKR Pico doesn't. It's not going to have Clipper on it. So this is the um, the the 20, the Pico Bilical. So if we remember that ends in FA9. So this is the ID for the Pico Bilical. It has some version of um, it has some version of Clipper on it. It says so in the documentation that it's going to have it. Um, it will need to be updated though. So let's go ahead and update it to the to the latest version. So compiling and up and uploading the firmware so we can go to um, do the menu config and then these are going to be the options we choose. So um, let's just clean that out and make menu config. And I'm going to move this where I can see, maybe. 
Let's do that and that. That. There we go. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> let's, let's set this. Um, Raspberry Pi 2040. And bootloader offset it says no bootloader. Why do we why do we have this option? Communication flash chip. What is this? These are all different options. Can I leave everything else default? I don't know if it needs a bootloader. Dude, does anybody know what these should be set? My brain's starting to get fried. <laughs> what? Oh, let's see. Is there an updated doc on this? Because this is the latest version of flash chip. I don't know what the flash chip is. It's generic or this one. <laughs> And then the bootloader offset. I don't know if we need a bootloader offset on this. I'm assuming just the defaults are OK, because these are new options. <laughs> He's going to want to come over here in a second. <laughs> you had an opportunity to go on a whole trip and see I'm still going. Yep, we're at, we're at the five, almost five and a half hour mark. We, we might get a while. Let's turn that off. Give us some more screen space. Get some room in here. I'm going to default it. So let's quit. And yes. No bootloader. It's W chip. OK. The docs are not up to date to the latest. That'll be some feedback. It is pre flashed, but I need to put I want to put it to the latest version, Bruno. So there's no other options that it says I need to change. Then we are going to make so this is going to create a firmware file we could throw um, on a uh, to it directly. But since it is already has a firmware, we can run um, we can flash directly to that device ID. Come on, let's hope it prints been here for the whole stream. Just waiting. It, it, it will come alive. I promise. I hope. So we're going to cut. We're going to follow this right here. So now we are going to. Uh, oop, let's put that there so you can actually see it. And we are going to sudo service clipper. Stop. Then we are going to, can I, can I copy this? Oh, I can. Let's see. Paste that and grab our ID up here. And oops. Paste that. And there. I'm Charlie. Yep. We got the port. That's OK. I was just seeing if it even Clipper even saw it and it did, which is good. LDO is doing a Trident giveaway over on Maker Deck tonight. Awesome. Excited to see who will win that. Me too. Is that it? Flashing found. It found it. It flashed it. Erasing, flashing, and rebooting device. You need to go over there. 
So that should be good. Let's see. Do we still see? Oops. It's not seeing a piece, so we might have to might have to restart. It's not seeing it right. Oh, clipper clipper isn't started. Start clipper. Is a trident any good? Go away, John. <laughs> Okay, let me restart the thing. Actually, I'm not going to do it here. I'm going to go here. I'm going to power up, power cycle. Shut down. Wait. Wait for what? Hoodwink, thank you. Extra microphone battery back fun. Thanks so much for your content and congratulations. Thank you. It only lists if they are not found. What do you mean? It should list the the it should list the device ID no matter what. Okay, rebooting the thing. Booting it back up. <laughs> nope. Nope what? Let's try this again. Did I try leveling the bed? Adjust live Z. Let's re reconnect. Okay, ls slash dev slash serial slash by dash id. There it is. So it's back. So it worked. That device ID there we're going to need. So I'm going to copy that. Um, back in the interface, I, I have a, um, a couple of files to upload. So let's upload. Documents, no, downloads, and here. And we are going to grab the Pico Bilical file and the printer.cfg file. Open these. And in the Pico Bilical config, we are going to cut paste in that USB or ID right here. Okay. And save that one. And now we need to flash the uh, the SKR Pico. So I have some instructions there that were sent to me from Nimgria. So we're going to go through those and see how they work for us. Top right in dash. I don't know. What are we talking about? Um. So let's go to there here, this SKR Pico flashing guide that was sent me. So SSH into the Pi using PuTTY and run the following commands. Firmware configure interface. So this is basically the same thing we just did. It's going to need the same, the same configuration. New options and Clipper 11. That's what those are. Okay. It's not generic. Top right in dash port IDs. I, what are we in what dash? Top right in dash. I don't know what that means. Quit the configuration by quit pressing Q, save when prompted, and run the following to generate a file. So firmware file so we are going to go ahead and run that same command because all the options are, are the same um, 
not the MCU ID. I, I, I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm sure I'm frustrating you, Jack. I, I'm not, I'm not getting it. And maybe it's, maybe I'm getting tired. Uh, I think what I'm doing here is going to work. This is not in the terminal, but in here. I don't know. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm not trying to frustrate anyone. Let me just keep going on these other instructions. I need to get Clipper Flash to this other. I got the main cell dash, but what am I looking for? Top right? What about it? What are we trying to do, Jack? Give me give me a full give me a full concept of what you're trying to tell me what to do. Red? Well, yeah, I know this isn't working. I know. This is okay. I get that. We need to get firmware on the controllers first before we can go anywhere with any other error messages and, and make things work. So let me get back here. Actually, get back here. And we're going to go to... Okay, now we can just make, because I've already got the options. We're not doing CAN bus. This is all USB. That's that's what DJ Natty agreed. This is all USB. The USB IDs will show. IP ID team. <laughs> Nothing to be done for all. So it must already have the, the file. So... I think you need to put the boot jumper on the SKR Pico and copy the clipper flash. Yes, we're, we're working towards that. Let me let Charlie. So back here, we are going to firmware file, prepare the SKR Pico for, for flashing. A couple steps need to be taken to set up the SKR Pico. Part of what I'm doing here is evaluating these instructions too. So, uh, Part of what I'm doing is evaluating these instructions. So if I need to give feedback on the instructions, this is what this is what we're doing. Just like the, the kit, if there's any last minute feedback we need to give on the kit, uh, like some part that tool head PCB. So install the jumper for USB power. This enables the Pico to be powered over USB and will be removed after flashing. Only use this if you don't have it connected to 24 volts. So we're gonna, not gonna do that because we have it connected to 24 volts right now. Install the jumper on the boot pins. So we have a boot jumper. So we're going to grab a jumper for the boot pins. We're not going to plug it in until we read more. But so we have a, a boot jumper. Now you can flash the SKR Pico a couple of different ways via PC or the Raspberry Pi. We will cover both methods in this guide. So we're gonna do it via the Raspberry Pi. So I'm going to take this boot jumper and... Hey Dustin, welcome. I'm going to take this boot jumper and install it. It is right here. So boot jumper is installed. So we're not gonna use a PC method. We're going to use the Raspberry Pi method. With the Pico plugged into the Raspberry Pi via USB-C and the boot jumper installed, press the reset button. Press the reset button. Next, we will need to mount the SKR Pico to the Raspberry Pi to copy the file Clipper UF2 over. So now we are going to sudo mount slash dev slash sda1 slash mnt okay yep
I, I could spell things correctly and it would work better. Okay, so it's mounted. <laughs> Come on, it's not Morat or fun. Pseudo CP out slash clipper dot UF two slash MNT. Is that correct? Pseudo. So we're going to copy the file clipper dot UF two in the out folder to whatever where we mounted that slash dev SDA one file. OK. And now it says LS slash dev slash serial slash by. ID. Now we have um, part of the problem here. Did we just copy that to the to the Pico Bilical? Did we just copy that to the Pico Bilical? Or did we copy it to the correct? Is SDA one the correct thing? So would I be better off? So what is this pseudo? What do I unmount? Oh, I forgot to pseudo unmount you mount. Yeah, I'm still only seeing the one. I didn't run the unmount command, but it's still not showing up. Um, I did. I did. I just did the unmount. Uh, should I unplug the Pico Bilical and then that's probably the the. You think? Oh, there we go. Removed it. So additional steps. Did I just not read far enough? So let's let's see here. Did I just not read far enough? Because they're both showing up now. Um, did I just not read far enough that I'm supposed to No. So some additional steps here are to remove that jumper, <laughs> because if I didn't do it, then most people aren't going to, and they're going to wonder why it didn't work. So they're both showing up now, though. Otherwise, we wouldn't get two, two devices here. So we should be good. So the other one, the Pico Bilical was FA9. Um. Uh, So let's copy that for the other. So then in printer config, the Pico Vilical is going to be this guy. Oops. That guy. <laughs> Save and restart. Oh, hey, Kyle. That's right. <sighs> get the oh yeah, it lights up. It's it's lit up. And here, check this out. Um, we see the umbilical and an MCU here. Do we see everything else? Check that out. It's working. It's up. <laughs> I don't have to. Oh, I do have to flash the Raspberry Pi as it as MCU to do the uh, input shaping. We're not going to get to input shaping today. Awesome. It is up. It is running. And of course, lost phone. Oh, all, let's do this. Yes, let's let's um, let's see. We are reporting temperatures. So now we're reporting temperatures. Yes, exactly what Steve just said. We need to plug our our stuff back in. Um, do I want to do this? There's no reason. Oh, hi, Charlie. 
I'm gonna do this live um, because we'll be able to see whether they um, hi whether the temperatures start increasing for some reason. So that's the bed. So the bed is not increasing. So good. Charlie, you are insistent on getting attention, but you're going to have to go over there. <laughs> OK, now we're going to turn it up and we're going to put the heater in Schroeder, and we shouldn't see that heating up. It is not heating up, so we are good on both of those. But that is a like I said, I wanted to I want to do that on every um, on every build from here. It's just stressing that <clears throat> chamber temp is coming from here. So chamber temp is coming from a thermistor that's mounted right here in front of this connector on the Pico Bilical board. So it's I think it's a pretty decent spot for it to be. Um, it's not on the tool head, so that's nice because it's not going to pick up temperature heat from the. Um, from the from the extruder stepper. <clears throat> so. Are any MOSFET LEDs on? I don't know which ones are the MOSFET LEDs. Let's just start going through our checks. Let's go here. Let's first go into the interface. So I'm going to switch over to the main cell interface. I'm going to go to the little end stop query and I'm going to trigger everything manually uh, just to see if they if they trigger. So if we go to machine and we go down to end stops and if I query this, they should all be triggered. End stop X is triggered right now. If I close it, it is still triggered. Why is end stop X triggered? Have you installed Clipper on that fancy watch? Okay. End stop X is being weird. So let's try Y. Y is working, is triggered. And let's try Z. Z is triggered. <coughs> Something is going on with X. So let's find out what's going on with X. X is plugged in. X is... is X is on the tool head. There must be a configuration change. Um, oh, I know why. I know why. I know why. And I'll, I'll show you why. I, I, I figured it out. I grabbed my configuration from my V0.2, which is running a Pico Bilical, but with an SKR Mini V2. Um, but I'm also running sensorless homing, and I didn't change those settings. So if we go to the Pico Bilical configuration, and we go down to the, uh, there is a section in here somewhere for the X end stop. There's NeoPixels. There's Thermistor. There should be one for the X end stop. Oh, so it would be on the X stepper. So is there a commented out? Did I comment out a Where did that end up being? So I can go UMB and it would be, but I didn't know if it ended up in here because this is, it can be. So let's go back to the Pico Vehicle docs. Down here is going to be a X end stop is GPIO zero. So now let's go 
to the here and close this and go to um, printer config. And down here on stepper X, my end stop pin, I have it, I have it pointed to the, to the, um, to the SKR Pico, but I'm going to change this to zero and I'm going to identify it at, do you have to do this? Is it UMB colon, right like that? I think that's it. Let's see if that works. So everything is happy from that, but if we go to uh, refresh these now, now X end stop is open. Let me close it and query again, and now it's triggered. So we're good. Hey, Bits, would you mind putting a link to the print config once you are done all, all the S1? Yes, I will be providing the config to LDO as well. It was in there. I didn't see it. I've got it working now. Okay, let's home X. Awesome. Home Y. It's not triggering. It's not triggering on that. So let's turn that off. It's hitting on something. What is it hitting on? Something is hitting. Ah, all these wires back here are hitting. All these, okay. So, the positioning of this board here is a problem. Um, I am going to kind of push this stuff up out of the way. This little printed piece is, is causing a problem. I think it will it will home now. Uh, let's home Y. Yeah. So this this little printed piece it, it needs some work. I'm gonna give the feedback on that. It's not sensorless. These are end stops. So this is V zero dot zero dot one. I'm going to turn these off and now I want to check to make sure that my Z end stop is going to trigger before I drive the nozzle into the bed. So we're going to move the bed up. Let's see if the, see if it triggers. No. So that's quite a ways away. So let's, let's compress the bed quite a bit because the tighter this is, actually, the better. Still not there, so I'm going to loosen the, the screw on the, on the motor mount here. I'm going to loosen this a few turns. This is the little dance of setting your Z offset on a V0. Yep, we're still not there. So let's loosen it some more. I could loosen it or I could move the um, the Z end stop down. I may get to the point where I want to move it down a little bit. That's there just a little bit, so I'm going to move it down just a, just a hair. It's right there. Nope, I've moved it right back to the same spot it was. right there. And I'm hearing where it goes. There we go. That's really close. That's a cl close enough to tune it with the bed. So we should be able to home all now. Put 
Cool. I'm gonna let Charlie out. Now it is still catching. If these wires get dropped down into place, um, it is still catching on the mount back here. This it's all the it's all the fault of this little printed spacer that was put in here. Um, it's moving things, and there's no real easy way to to wire this without things hitting back there. So that just needs to be tweaked. That's not a big deal. This is why we test these things. So let's try this again. Let's try homing all, see if I just massage things out of the way enough. Yeah, it's it's hitting something there before it's hitting the the, the YN stop. I'm going to do a little tweak here. I'm going to bend this this. Um, that a little bit just to see if we can get that to trigger just a little earlier. Home it again. After you tested engineer crimpers and gave them an unfavorable grade compared to iWIS, but recommended. There we go. The engineer strippers, I finally splurged on those. Best decision. Awesome. Glad to hear. I'm not going to. I could remove the spacer. You're right. I don't want to start running into an issue where I'm having to worry about whether things are going to hit the hit the stepper. So right now it's homing. We're good. The, removing the spacer is a good idea. If I remove the spacer, I don't have enough confidence that I'm not going to run into other problems. I can I can move if I can move, just massage these wires up out of the way for right now. We're OK. So. Um, yeah, let's see if let's see if the fans work. Um, there is no. Here. Hey, perfect. Let's turn on the heart cooling fan. Heart cooling fan, where is it? Unlock that turn. There we go. They are both spinning. Let's unlock that. Turn it off. Let's heat it up to only 50 C. Just see if the hot end fan starts up. Yep, it starts up. So let's cool down. Those checks work. Let's. Let's do a PID tune. Put some tape on the back of the board. I will be cleaning this up after stream. But right now, if it can home and I can just I've, I've massaged the stuff out of the way. We're OK for now. Let's do a PID tune. I always go out to Clipper just because I always forget. I go to documentation and config checks and down through here is all the stuff. So we, we did a lot of this verification already. We verified the end stops. We verified the stepper motors. We didn't verify the extruder yet, but now we're going to do a PID tune. And we're going to paste this in. We're going to do this at a temperature of 210. The Voron first start docks is a great idea as well. While that's doing a PID tune, I'm going to switch microphones back because um, I like the other microphone better and it's got enough charge to get us through at least the next three hours.
Okay, we're back. <laughs> we won't be going for three hours. <laughs> we won't be going for three hours. What chamber temp? What chamber temp can you expect from V0.1 when printing ABS? I don't remember what my other one gets to. It's in the 60s. The LED on Kirigami. Oh yeah, the LED is, oh, it's working. I mean, <laughs> yeah, we got a nice little LED. Charlie will be a turd when you still going in three hours that that is for sure he's gonna he's gonna tackle me when i'm done um i kind of wanted to touch on panels i don't know if we're gonna i've got a, a one-piece top hat i printed that would go right like that A macro be made for, say, PLA and ABS. Oh, to PID tune it? Or to to set your PID numbers? I don't know. You, you can. I remember the try for that one-piece top hat. It printed pretty well. Um, and then we have all the panels so let's that finished so let's go ahead we won't be done in the next five minutes will we do it start streaming at the top of the hour too wow that's 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 um that sucks i'm rebooting that I am going to get, here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna be going for more than five minutes, unfortunately. I'll, I'll go say hi to DeWitt when I'm done. Um, Tim, right? Um, but what I'm gonna do is we're gonna get a print going and I'm gonna start working on panels while that print is going. And I'm gonna just keep going because I wanna finish the printer. And if you wanna come back and watch it later, that's cool. <laughs> Let me let Charlie in. What color should we print the, the little reindeer in? Oh, do I have, let's see. I have a brown, we'll print a brown reindeer. I'll just have to watch three streams at the same time. <laughs> Good. Problem solving. I have some brown Esun PLA that I've had for, for literally years. Good idea if only there was a place to stream your printer 24 seven from. Hmm. I don't know where that is. At least I don't need to watch split stream. I started after the World Cup was done, right? I'm sure the post game show was interesting. Yeah, hoodwink. The, another option would be to home Y at, at the middle of X would get out of the way there. No problem, 8 bits. Okay, we need to do a bed, a bed PID tune. So grab the Grab the target for the bed. And we will do that 60C is fine for right now. We're just printing PLA. I printed a couple of reindeer models in gold silk PLA last year. They looked amazing. Awesome. Let's see if it's, see if it's warming up yet.
So 24.9. It's not increasing. Someone said I probably wired the, the bed wrong. That's correct. It's not increasing. Zombie, thank you. Um, yeah, clipper shut down because it's heating, not heating at expected rate. Why isn't it working? Okay, let's see why that did not work. Let's check config first. So if I go to the machine, go to printer config, our bed settings are in here. It doesn't feel warm, feel warm. There's no, there's no, no, no indication it got warm. I want to look at my heated bed. GPIO 26. Our heater pin is GPIO 29. Is that what we have? No, 21. Heater bed is 21. I went off of, so let's check something here. I went off of the Boron. Zero GitHub. It's I've got the wrong pin set according to the docs. I did reconnect it. It sounds like I have the wrong pin set, but I'm trying to figure out how I did that. So I went to the Voron Zero GitHub and I went to firmware and there is a Pico example config here. So if I scroll down here and go to the bed heater, what did it set? Did I just typo it? GPIO 21, GPIO 21. That should be GPIO 21. I have set GPIO 29. 21 was a servo pin beside the bed pin. Oh, probe servos. But I got it, I got it from here. So that was just a, a happenstance that it's there. I didn't get it from that diagram. I had the pin set wrong. So let's save and restart and redo that. Did you level your bed? <laughs> Might be the issue. <laughs> okay. Dashboard. Let's rerun the command. Hey, look at that increase. You can you can barely see it through the through the chat. <laughs> this is space gray, Nathan. Good night, Tiger. I feel it warming up now, too. Easy fix. Check the simple stuff first. Yeah, it's warming up now. Okay, while that is PID tuning, let's, we're going to continue doing things. Oh, let's get a, um, let's get a, a, a PTFE tube installed. Let's get a PTFE tube installed. You have to PID the extruder again. You didn't save. Yeah, I did. I saved. I saved the the extruder PID. OK, so this goes up through here. And into the that. Let's make sure we can hit all our spots. So we need a little bit more. That's probably good right there. Yep. And then we're just going to 
I'm gonna run it around there and then probably across here and cut it off right here. It's gonna be enough for this one. this through the, it's a little tight fit, but that'll be fine for now. Hi, Charlie. Also, we can cut this short. No, don't get up in there. <laughs> Cut that short and put that on there. Okay. Is can worth the upgrade? I'm having fun playing with can stuff. I haven't used it enough to, to be able to say what kind of gotchas I experience, but I'm pretty pleased with with the way CAN works and the way it simplifies wiring. <laughs> we are going to be putting, um, we are going to be putting panels on, but I'm going to put the, the spool holder so LDO came up with a, I think David at LDO came up with a little, a little custom spool holder that is removable. And it's kind of neat. It's a good, it's a good idea. So this will bolt back here into place. And um, with the screw that would normally hold this side panel in, and then this goes on and can, and can be removed and moved out of the way and moved. So let's put, let's put one of those in there. It's a post install Tina. Does Charlie fit in a V0.1? Did you, did you folks, if, if you didn't see that on Twitter, I know Twitter is kind of a <clears throat> annoying place right now, but if you um, didn't see it on Twitter, look at one of my recent posts where Charlie sat on one of my V0s and I had to hold the lead screw to keep it from falling automatically. But as soon as I let go, it moved down and he stayed on it. It was kind of funny. It was a little cute. <sighs> I'm going to try to put one of these on from the side without gravity helping me. Okay. And then the screw going through here is probably a 12, maybe. Nope, maybe as small as an eight. Try this just so we can hold a spool on there. There we go. And that'll go there with a little bit of PTFE in here. There we go. Late stream, yep. We are going for it. Six, six hours and counting. <laughs> This is in the LDO docs, yep. It's clever, I like it. Oh, there's Charlie again. Are we done with the PID tune? Oh, it's still working. The goal is to get it printing. We are about, about to print. that up a little bit. Move that up to there. There we go. 
see you, Danny. Have a safe holiday. The LDO manual pictures has accents on the skirt feet. STLs, is that a user mod? So there is, there are Trident style skirts for, as a mod for V0.1. That style is being adopted for V0.2. So a lot of the stuff on, um, on the LDO docs is a lot of the V0.2 style stuff on there. <laughs> um, is that done yet? Nope, still going. <laughs> yep, he instantly just settles in. No, no time at all. Size of the printer next to the spool. Yeah. Charged extra for the CAT scan. Yeah. Um. We, before we actually print on this, once this PID tune is done, I'm gonna flip it over because I wanna put the, um, I wanna put the skirts on. I want this to look complete. So we will put the skirts on and then we'll slice something up and print it. are not allowed in the printer room. <laughs> like the spool is as big as the side of the size of, as the side of the rook. Where are we at? Is that thing still going? It's still working on the PID tin. Is there a display? No. By default, these don't come with a display. There is a V0 display, a little OLED um, mini display, but that's not, doesn't come with the kit. What is the new heater supposed to be better at? Um, well, the the direct the thermistor directly threaded into the bed should have a little better um, accuracy or at least response. And I, I did have a granola bar, Kyle. Um, and it's a higher wattage. It's 100 watts instead of 60. Are the covers for the PSU and electronics base polycarbonate? Um, it's all, um, all the black is acrylic. I think everything's acrylic. This is just black matte. Are you done yet? The PID tune takes forever. I do something else, but I'm kind of tied up. The Rook Homer 200 by 200, but modified for 180, 180 bed. 12 millimeter linear rods instead of 16 millimeter. There's a, are there, there's a bunch of mods out there for the Rooks now or variations on it. Hmm. <sighs> it's going back down to 55. Kitty is important, but I guess since we're waiting for a PID tune anyway.
I figured this would be six or seven hours today. I did figure that. I thought it'd be a little further along at the six or seven hour mark, though. <laughs> that was the Pico Bilical. Missed that section. I'll rewatch tomorrow. It went fine. I didn't have any problems with setting it up. Everything appears to be working. It heats up. The fans turn on. The homes. <laughs> Do, 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 do. Yeah. PID tune is still going. Modded a mod. Is LDO getting rid of Space Gray? Is it exclusive to certain orders? I think I saw something. Oh, no, they're not getting rid of Space Gray. That's their most popular color now. Yeah. Space Gray is where it's at, apparently. I have this kit on our space gray is a very nice color. I like it, but as soon as this finishes, I'm going to set him down and we're going to get moving again. 24 volt DC isn't as fast. No, it's it's still not. It's not a huge difference in heat up time, but it works well. I mean, I, I'm using one of these on my other printer on my other V0. Charlie's going to demand a pay raise after having to work six plus hours stream. <laughs> Uh, is this the last cycle that's been going for? Oh, it's been going for over 10 minutes. Hi, Derek. It's been going for for over 10 minutes for the bed tin. I wonder how, how long would this be on the 60 watt bed? <laughs> Super late. We're just getting started. Didn't you hear? We got another three hours. Have you ever had a pie that won't reboot or shut down? Not yet. I've been lucky with my pies. They're all still alive. <sighs> bed heat up should not be bad with a bed that small. Oh, it's not bad. It's not bad at all. Even on the 60 watt, they're not terrible. <laughs> hey, Max. You didn't miss it, but I'm six hours in. Six hours and 15 minutes in. Oh, now it's going back to 60. <laughs> we are on a marathon today. Everybody say hi, Max. Let's get every, let's wake everybody up. All 218 of you. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to get my I'm going to get my pay doc for that. <laughs> What's 10% of zero? <laughs> Panzerkatten, thanks for getting the memberships. <clears throat> oh, is that, geez, that is a long PID tune. <laughs> Thank you, zombie. My headache hasn't gone away. Derek, thank you. Appreciate that. <laughs> Ooh. 
This is a 20 minute PID tin. I wanted to do other stuff on here. It would probably defeat the purpose if I blew on it or something to get to cool down faster. Panzer Cadden, a member for four months. Thank you. 1.19 a.m. going strong. <laughs> hey, Scott, thanks for the gift of memberships. Do we still have people in here that aren't members? We do. Awesome. Welcome to the new members. Wow. <laughs> now Max has to say hi back to everybody individually. Yes. Get on it, Max. <laughs> eh, I'm not ready for that. <laughs> oh. My idea to start early seeming like a better idea, it does. I, well, I would have interfered with the World Cup. So no matter what I do, I lose. <laughs> Anyone that hangs with me for this long needs to be a member. I mean, there's a lot of green here. That's awesome. <laughs> no. <laughs> My 60 watt bed doesn't take this long. Maybe the new thermistor is making a difference with accurate readings. No, I think it's... I don't, I don't think anything here is out of normal. Sanity's going to sleep? I don't think that happens. <laughs> See you, Sanity, if you're still around. <laughs> what have you missed? Not a lot. It's very, very early morning for many of you, and I appreciate it. Hey, there we go. It finished. Save the config. Save the config and we are going to shut it down real quick. We are going to shut it down real quick and we're going to install those um, those skirts. So at least we have a complete looking printer. You have to be up in two hours for work. At that point, you don't go to sleep. That's how I, I couldn't do it. Okay, we are going to turn this thing back over. See if we're gonna, yep, we're, we're okay. And we're gonna, I already have all the nuts here, so this won't take very long, but we're going to put these skirts on. Got it all printed. All ready to go. What do you think? You like it, Max? I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty stoked with the with the setup. Color combination is is on point. Let's just line all these up and start getting them getting them in there. these screws lined up first. There we go. That should do it. What do we got? Kyle Steve was thinking about that actually. It took almost five minutes to get to 60. Calibrate extruder. We did. Oh, we didn't calibrate the extruder. Um, need to make sure it works too. Make sure it's turning in the right direction. But we get all that. To the purple. Okay, work our way around. Yeah. 
Okay, so hopefully that's all correct. Hi, Bruno, welcome back. Very long stream today. Oh yeah, I always combine these skirts. They are separate pieces. Um, and I, I go in and, and just combine the files. I, um, I just like the looks of the, of the single piece skirts better. Okay, I feel much better now. It needed it needed skirts before I can print. These are not the ones with the honeycomb inlays. It doesn't work as well for this because the print surface is on the outside on these, you see. There we go. Um, let's see if we can get just a little more light on that. Now at least it's a mostly complete. Let's power back on and get a print going. Power on. We didn't put the case fan on. The case fan could go on. I'll put this case fan on later. See you, John. One quick print. At least starting a print. I'm going to bed. It's two at night here. I watch the rest tomorrow. <laughs> See you, Henry. Thanks for being here. Speaking of, turn that back on. <laughs> Are you going to get the full 220 millimeters of build volume or will it be any less than that at all? We should get the full. We are going to go through the extruder stuff now. So let's try this. Make sure we can get to it. It's booting up. And let's just pull this out and heat the extruder up. Let's just go to 200. <clears throat> and let's see if we can get some. I've kicked off another Eiffel print. Hopefully this one doesn't kill my extruder. Oh, the previous one failed. That's a bummer. <laughs> hey, Salmon. Okay, let's go here, I guess. I've just pushed some filament through. We're just gonna see if it extrudes in the right direction. This is the first test, right? So we're at 200 C, that's plenty to extrude. And I'm just gonna go into the main cell interface here and just, just extrude. 
Um, we'll go at two millimeters per second. I don't think it's moving at all. It's, it's vibrating. Um, let's find out why. Let's go to, I don't know if it's moving in the right direction even. Let's see what is, if it's binding up, if what's going on. Let's look at our settings first. Let's go down to extruder. And I think my current is probably a little low. Let's bump this up to point, oops, 0.475. I usually start really low on these and it bites me. Um, so go back over here, get it back up to 200 so it'll extrude. No, I can hear it. It's 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 vibrating. OK, that is back up. Let's extrude. Yeah, it's it's not behaving properly. It's not even moving as it should be. Fun. It's just, it's just vibrating like the, like the, like the pinout is wrong. Let me see. It's vibrating like the pinout is wrong or something's, something's not connected properly. I'm just looking. Okay, I think there's a problem here. Let me let me shut the let me cool it down. It looks like one of the pins, it looks like one of the pins on the tool head connector might be might not have seated all the way. So we are going to let it cool down a little bit. Now I'm going to power it off and um, and check that. The pins are set right, but I, I suspect that there's a pin in there that's pushed out, just looking at it. Yeah, it is better to start low and then work the way up. Yep. Let's let this extruder get down a little bit so it doesn't heat soak too bad. And we have to wait for that because we can't unplug that stepper while it's powered up. That's a bad idea. This isn't even trying to turn even when it was the latch was open. So there's a there's a connection problem. And I'm going to I'm going to since there's no filament in there and it's fairly low mass, I am going to turn this off a bit earlier than I normally would have just in the interest of time. So I am going to shut it down. It's a little under 100 C now. OK, now I'm going to get in here and. Yeah, that that wire is not. Yep, the red wire there is not all the way in. I don't know if you can you can see that from from there, but one wire was not seated. There we go.
and now it is. I gotta get my fat fingers in there and get it plugged back in. Okay, let's try this again. The red wire was not seated. And I power it off before I unplug that. Just, just disabling the steppers isn't enough. <sighs> okay, let's get this power back on. What do we got? I'm going to have to shoot off to bed. I have a job interview. Good luck, Mike. I wish you well. Okay, we should be back up and running. So now, let's just bump this up. And then we're just gonna dry extrude and see if I get the same the same problem. It, it, it just vibrated. So that's usually an indication, not that, that one of the, um, one of the coils is not connected right. So what all have I missed? A V0S1 build. We're about to print. Okay, we are going to extrude. There we are. There's the noise. Oh, but it's not. I can't tell if it's. Now it's not doing anything. <laughs> I thought I heard it extruding, but it definitely didn't make the, the vibrating noise. Now it's not doing anything. Is, am I not in there? Am I actually just not in, in the... Good spot with the red cable. Yeah, but we're not getting anything now, and that's a little weird. I'm extruding, but I can't actually tell what's going on. Right, let's do this. Oh, there it goes. It is moving. It's just very slow. I had it set to two millimeters per second. It's, it's, it's retracting right now when I hit retract, so it's going in the correct direction. No, we're good. I just, it was moving so slow, I couldn't tell what was going on. Let's bump this up and extrude. There we go. You'll see that moving next. Extrude. It's extruding. I'm going 25 millimeters at a time here. There we are. We have plastic being extruded. Okay, stream's over. <laughs> Extrude. I'm not getting any skipping. I, I usually hear it. Woohoo! Okay, let's go ahead and pull that out and do a quick extrusion um, uh, calculator check. Find something, something easier to, to see. It pushed plastic. It has pushed plastic. Yes. 
So let's see how close this is. Still 20 minutes before maker deck. So let's extrude. Then I'm going to mark. I'm going to mark at a hundred and note where that is in relation to my actually hundred and it is it is dead on and then at a slow speed and a little more temperature actually just to eliminate any the rotation distance is very close but we're still going to do this. We're going to do two millimeters per second, and we're gonna extrude 50 millimeters. It ain't a printer until it prints something. It's gonna print something. Two millimeters per second to try to, since we're actually extruding through a nozzle, just to minimize any chance that there's an issue with skipping steps or anything. Okay, so you can't see that, but that is dead on 50 millimeters right there. We're good. Let's print something. Let's get the brown filament back in. It just printed a ramen noodle. <laughs> we are going to, well, now what we need to do is level the bed. We gotta level the bed. It's not gonna print anything if I don't level the bed. <laughs> Where's my... Let's clean the bed. At least clean most of the bed. And let's home. Home all. Okay, Z20, let's go to Z0. G0, Z0. Let's just see how close we are. Oh, we are way off. Okay, so the bed screws adjust. Is that the bed screw adjust? Is that set up? Does the bed screws adjust? There we go. Okay, let's get a piece of paper. I am still here. Hi, 94. Okay, there's one. Oh, this is kind of nice. There's an interface here in mainsail for it. I'm sure there's one in fluid too, but that is nice. So that is adjusted. Then I'm just gonna use the paper and adjusted. There's no need to Z end stop calibrate if you do this. There's no need to Z and stop calibrate. I'm adjusting. So what I'm doing is I'm adjusting the screws on the bed, like an ender or Creality or whatever to, um, 
to set this. So. See you, Marcel. This is this will basically end up with a zero Z offset, right? So I'm going to accept that because we were close and now we're closer. And then we're going to accept that. And okay, I'm going to call that done. I'm going to accept it. And then it's good. So now we are ready to print. Okay, let's bring up, is there a, so this is Prusa Slicer. Do I have a, a V0 in here? Let's give, what? I think there's a there's a V0 in the in the configuration wizard. So I, I think you're right. I think I'm going to just start this watch truck. <laughs> um, other vendors. Voron. Isn't that amazing? Voron is in this list. Look at this list of printers and Voron is in it. And I think if we go down here, yes, the V0, the 0.4 nozzle. And finish. We're gonna discard all those changes we made. About 19 minutes on a V0. Hey, cool, we get a you get a cool custom plate. Let's look at this. Let's see. Um, well, all of this is going to be weird for my normal settings, but that's an awfully big V0, Mr. Prusa. Big Joey Papa P. I selected the V0, right? No, I didn't. V2. Why did that? Why did that pull up a V2? Well, that's weird. Never mind. I take it back. <laughs> what is the extruder? Cal oh, retraction. Two millimeters. Point eight. Filament settings. We're basic PLA. We don't really care here right now. <laughs> Cooling, 100%. Sure. Um, <laughs> Dragon, thanks for gifting the memberships. Let's leave most of this all default. I don't, I'm not going to do the extra perimeters, all that kind of stuff. I am going to do high infill on this because for the top layers. And speed, we are going to go. <clears throat> We're just going to go for it. I'm, I'm making up numbers here, so don't worry about this. I'm, I'm totally just speeding it up. Sure. Travel speeds, first layer speeds, fine. Perimeters, no. And fill. First layer, sure. Default, sure. These are YOLO. I mean, and they're not super fast, really. And the parts outside of the print area. Let's go that and let's slice it. What does it say? We got a 20 minute little swatch. You said 19, that's darn close. Let's go to our printer setting, though. And let's make sure that I have. Max Excel 12,000. OK, 
So it will, it will hit the Excels. Um, what do we think? Are we good? <laughs> Let's go here. We do not need to be at 220. I guess, I guess it's just gonna, it's just gonna run. So let's find out. Actual time is about 19. Yeah, it'll be, it'll be quicker. Um, go back to Prusa Slicer and oops, where'd that go? Export the G code. Downloads. Here, I might as well show you what I'm doing here instead of. So that's exported and then back to here. Let's just upload and print. Swatch truck, open. The shaper tool has not been run. I'll have to cover that in another, a, a short or something. Um, let's go here and let's see what happens. <sighs> oh, how'd the Tridec bill go? I'm in the middle of it still. <clears throat> We're still working on it. We'll be back to that on New Year's Day. 94. Unable to open file. Why not? Print. Unable to open file. SD card location wrong. Okay. That's going to be in here, right? No, in Moonraker. No, path. What is this? What this? <clears throat> what should this path be? It's some new thing, right? Oops. What's the new? What's the new path here? Do we know offhand? I mean, I can look it up. Let's let's go through the looking it up. Um, what is it? Main sale documentation. Is it is it main seller? Path has changed, and that is that where it changed? Is right here. It should be um, printer data slash G codes. Like that. Let's save and restart. Let's go back. Is that all I need to do? Yes, <laughs> that's all I needed to do. Oops, all right here. So it is heating up. Actually, it's cooling down the bed because apparently first layer's temp is set to 55. <laughs> awesome. Hey, Pex Peppers. Still going, only for a little bit longer. Only for a little bit longer. It is working on hitting the start temperature. I am guess official judge of this printer is good or not. <laughs> uh, 
Oh boy. It's cooling down to 55. Apparently it's waiting for that. Grab any ooze. <laughs> Spit all over the bed. There we go. Now what is it doing? Heating up to 215 or cooling down to 215. We're a little, we're a little high, I think. There it goes. See if I caught it in time. Yeah, actually, it looks pretty OK for a first layer. Will you do an update on the work you do on the printer off stream? Yes. Um, at the very least, I'll post to to Twitter and and um, and wherever else. Maybe I can post on my forum.vorondesign.com page. Did you cover your macros for stealth bed LED earlier? No, it's just turned on. There are no macros set up for it. I, I don't have any macros set up. Is the idea that Pico Bilical just carries the ADXL around all the time and you can run resonance measurements whenever you want? No, because you have to run a little FFC cable from the tool head to the Pi. I, I gotta say, this print this print is gorgeous so far compared to the Ender 5. <laughs> it's officially a printer. Is there a good place to locate the laptop PCB camera in a V0.1? I haven't I haven't tried. What do you think of the mag bed? Um I've been using, if you're talking about the 100 watt one here, I've been using one on another printer for a while. Um, I have a, I do, honestly, I have a thermistor issue on it, but I have a replacement thermistor I need to plug into it. Core XY, yep, Metalwork, it's Core XY. Top ender bashing, that's my job. And it's going significantly faster than your Ender 5 did. After a year of watching my stream, we finally did it and got yourself a kitten. Awesome. What's his name? Their name. <laughs> The very first print is at uh, 8,000 XL's peak and about 100, 160 or whatever is the max XL or velocities I put in. I think I just have a connection issue inside the thermistor itself. I, I have a replacement. I need to swap it out and test it. Kitten's name is Kitty. <laughs> How original. So there's no um, pressure advance setting, I don't believe, in this in this profile. Let's see. And there's no default in the. Yeah, there's no pressure advance here. I can I can see it. <laughs> it has been a long day. Welcome back, John.
How long was the Ender 5? How long was that print? The this calibration print. I don't even remember. It seems like a, a week ago. My bed thermistor shows temp drops on heat up, but stays flat during print. Not sure how much to worry. Um, I don't know. If it stays consistent during your print, you're probably okay. Is that a print in place truck? It is, it's a little um, filament swatch that Zombie Hedgehog made. He actually won um, one of the uh, printables contests with it. This is not, this is eSun PLA Plus. It was 39 minutes for that, the same thing yesterday, so this is twice as fast. We are at seven hours right now. <laughs> we are at seven hours. Oh. What happened to printing a brown reindeer? I, I, I wanted something that would finish within us talking. <laughs> That's why the brown filament's in there. <laughs> Oh, and it's gyroid. I haven't printed gyroid in forever. My default is cubic. I just realized, I was wondering what it was, what it was doing. Oh, this would be quicker then. Gyroid slows down a print, doesn't it? I bet you, the, let's see what it would do if we change, just change the, so right now it says, right now it says 20 minutes. What if we just change the infill to cubic or, that's generally what I use. Uh, fill pattern, cubic. Let's see what that says it'll do it in. 18 minutes of cubic. <laughs> a brown truck is kind of equivalent to eight reindeer. There you go. That's a good way to think of it. There is the, uh, yep. Well, percentage-wise, it's quite a bit. It's it's two or one percent. Sorry, five percent. Okay, I'm not gonna do math. <sighs> what mods would you consider making to this kit? Like adding a camera. That's the kind of things. Everything else is pretty much there. Um, display. A display is nice. I like having displays. And I usually, on my V0s, I just run the, the V0 display. Although there's a 2.8 inch wave share I wanna buy and try. I just haven't gotten around to ordering one yet. Uh, Hard K has a nice mount for it. Ten percent. That's right. See, don't make me do math right now. <laughs> hey, OGK, welcome back. I haven't put lights in any of my V zeros either. Recommendations for display on the V0.1. The easiest display is the V0 display by Tim, Tim Abraham. Show us some out for the 2.8. Um, I don't know if he might have it published. Let me, you can watch the print. I'll, I'll see if I can find his GitHub. It prints, Sean, it does. Let me see, miscellaneous stuff probably. Voron mods, maybe Voron zero? There we go. Um, is there a picture here though? 
Now, there's not a picture here, so it's going to be hard to show. I mean, we can look at the... We can look at the thing. I mean, it's a, it's just a, just a display mount. But, yeah. How are we doing on temperature on things? Steppers aren't doing too bad. Works well for clipper screen in this case where Pico doesn't have the headers. So the the V the Voron Zero, the V0 display use the, the regular one uses an STM controller and can connect via USB. And also with a, uh, you can connect it with CAN with a little adapter. Um, yeah. How is this thing looking? Can it print TPU? Sure, but I have no idea how fast. I've never tried to print TPU fast. Um, who is it? Greg's Maker Corner was just posting something on Twitter about printing um, TPU fast on, was it a V0 or some sort of one? Oh, you, you, you DM me a print. Thanks, thanks, Kyle. Let me, um, let me bring this up so you can see it. Oops. Open original. Yep. And let me get this all set. Here we go. This is this is the display. This is the one Kyle made for the 2.8. This is the 2.8 wave share touch screen. This one connects with DSI though, right? So it needs, um, it would need a full size Pi. So yeah. <sighs> Well, I know VZBot did some really fast TPU printing. I just know that Greg's Maker Corner also posted some stuff he was printing. I think he was printing it at 100 millimeters per second, which is fast for TPU. Yeah, that one has DSI, so it's not Pi Zero compatible. You'd have to look for an HDMI type display for Pi Zero, right? How far along is this? 64%, not far from done. You see the high flow Polymaker TPU? No. You can use the DSi adapter for the W2. Oh, there's a DSi adapter? What's that? I'll have to look that up. Any Pi with HDMI will do clipper screen, but then you need the touch, right? How do you get the touch? <sighs> yeah, for no, no real tuning, there's no pressure advance applied to this at all. Polyflex TPU 95 high flow. TPU 95, so it's a little tougher than, or harder than the other stuff, right? Uh, 
haven't done a seven hour print stream in a while. <sighs> What's pressure advance? <clears throat> so that is an algorithm that the printers, most firmware support some form of this where it will adjust the extrusion as you approach corners to try to um, minimize bulging on on features like that. Linear advance, it's referred to in other places. Um, I don't know what else it might be referred to as. Same hardness, but melts quicker. OK. Unconscious bias, I think that's a fully conscious bias. <laughs> it made a mount for the 3.5 inch wave share screen on the Voron Zero that uses SPI. Okay. How long has this been going? This has been going for 17, almost 18 minutes. You are four hours late for the giveaway. I did see that Marlon announced input shaping. I have no idea what any details about it, but I saw the I saw the list. I am still going. And thanks, Poity. I really wanted to get panels on today. Um, oh, there we go. That is an 18 minute and 27 second zombie hedgehog filament swatch. Very nice. Will it pop off of here quickly? Point three is very loose. Point two won't come free. But, oh, there we go. Point two came free. But the pressure advance is the biggest culprit there. Point one won't come free. Untuned. Pretty fast for PLA printing. Would you recommend going 3Z from dual on a large core XY? I would recommend on any bed large enough that you feel like you need to tram to go at least, well, to go three. I don't like the dual where you have no control over tilt. I mean, you have tilt, but not yaw. What's that? I don't know. Yeah, this is this is good. That worked out well. Completely untuned and just throwing some some speed settings out there to where this would actually finish a print on stream. <laughs> Finished a print on stream. So what is left for me to do on here before it's truly a complete kit? Because it came with all the panels, came with panels. I printed a top hat. And I have all the stuff to put it all together. I'm going to do that. I'm going to end up doing it off stream. Um, I would be on a normal day. I might be tempted to just keep going. But honestly, my headache never went away. Um, so I think I'm going to wind down. <laughs> but we did finish it. And this is awesome. And it is, it, I mean, it, straight out of the gate, it, that's a, that, that was a reasonably quick print. So. <laughs> Still live. Yep. So. Post the make. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I haven't posted any makes. I need to get some Prusa meters for posting my makes. I should have done it ages ago because now you don't get as many points. I just hit 350. I could get a spool, but I'm going, well, I, I was going for the Prusa mini, but I might not, not, not have to go for that anymore. I did keep my promise of having it printing. I just wanted the, the panels on it. <laughs> so. Uh, you've got endurance. 
have to go to bed. See you, Sanders. It's a printer, it's been seven hours. Yes, I am going to relax. Maker Deck is doing a giveaway on their Twitch channel. Yeah, everybody, Maker Deck's doing a giveaway. Tim at uh, DeWitt 3D is probably streaming. There's lots of stuff out there. I'm gonna go probably veg in front of something. So, um, yeah, no problem, Bigger Fish. Have a good one. I got two spools before they change the rules. Yeah. Um, let's see, what else do we got here? So, once again, huge thanks to Jason and LDO. This is the first Voron Zero I've been able to build on YouTube on stream. Uh, so uh, surprisingly, I'd had the only Voron or Zero content I'd had before that was installing a Zero display on my red Voron Zero. So this was, I jumped at the opportunity. Jason asked if I wanted to do one of these for the introduction of this S1 kit. And I said, sure, I haven't, I haven't done one. I'll make it work. I'll make it fit. Um, so that was that was cool that was it was fun it's it's a good printer that is going to be in my in my collection and in my used printers um so like i said thanks to jason um thanks to polymaker for letting me start doing the the day the stream the every stream filament giveaway um and thanks to all of you for hanging out for i mean everybody that's here right now and it's five o'clock my time seven hours and 15 minutes later Thank you. <laughs> so, marathon, yes. I'm going to go sit down and let Charlie snuggle on my shoulder. And we will see you not... So everybody have a good holiday. Whatever you celebrate, if you don't celebrate anything, have a good next couple of weeks. I will not be streaming this coming weekend uh, because of the Christmas holiday, but I will be back at it on New Year's Day. And we'll be working on the Tridex, and we're going to finish off the Tridex um, starting on that New Year's Day. In January, there's a good chance, it's not sure, so I'm not going to say what it's going to be. There's a good chance I'm going to do some uh, 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 build uh, during weekday streams, because I, I need to work on something that might be coming, um, and it can't wait. And I don't want other things to wait. So lots of good stuff coming up, so stick around. Um, and we'll see you the next one. So once again, thank you, everybody. Um, have a good holidays. Have a good couple of weeks. And we'll see you in two weeks. <laughs> Bye.